It is forecast, though, to continue to turn away from land. This looks like it will uh, push out into the North Atlantic over the next couple of days. And uh, Tropical Depression number 7, it has not been named yet, may uh, be named later on today. Very close to tropical storm strength. Winds at 35 miles per hour. Looks like this storm is going to go to the north. So both storms appears. No threat to land at this time. That's the latest. We'll have more next hour, Vince. All right. Thank you very much, Dave. And as we go to break, we want to remind you that Jeannie Mose will be along with her fashion folly story. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to eat. Mm -hmm. Think new Uncle Ben's mini bowls like cheeseburger, cheeseburger, and pepperoni pizzeria. Mini bowls. Make hunger. Say uncle. Warms my bones. Hey, big party tonight? You want it to be cool, don't you? Ah! Uh, yeah. Do I know you? Who's the jammy sister? Let's go to Pier 1. Guys love to eat off plates like these. Who's having a party? You're having a party. Sexy. And sensible. Hurry in and save 20 to 50% during our dining sale. Sexy glasses. Mm -hmm. The one of a kind experience of Pier 1. Get in touch with your senses. Mm. Okay. That looks good. Mm. Beautiful. I love the camera. Work it. Hi, fashion. You're so sexy. Packed with protein and essential vitamins and minerals, Carnation Instant Breakfast is the perfect morning fuel to power you up for whatever you've got to do today. You're a jungle cat! And if you're really lucky, hugs achieve new balance. CSFB Direct, ranked as the number one online broker by Barron's and backed by the resources of Credit Suisse First Boston. That's the difference between online trading and direct investing from CSFB Direct. No one covers more ground than the fast cats. Conoco, think big, move fast. When you retire, Conseco offers a wide variety of retirement products that can help. Conseco, step up. Burden of Proof, weekdays, 1230 Eastern on CNN. Hi, my name is Anika Rabiu. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. And I would like to ask CNN, how does an aspiring model become a model? The ways in which one can become a model are endless. A girl can be scouted at the mall walking down the street. American 11 Heavy, taxi November. Okay, American 11 Heavy just walked right there and we'll be short Agency, They can go to a modeling convention. It's just any way that anyone can see you. We at Click look for girls who are minimum at 5'9 and under 21 to begin. And we can find those girls everywhere. And what we ask them to do is either to send in their Polaroids or send in their snapshots so that we can get a line of their body and their bone structure. Ask CNN. American 11 uh, Heavy. You're going to give way to the Donia and the regional jet on the opposite side. Uh, taxi to the Bravo Hold Point via Kilo and Bravo. Expect to run away for right for the puncher. Okay, uh, to the Bravo Hold Point after the uh, regional jet and the Dornier. Uh, American 11 Heavy. Face to face. Online interface. Personal. Productive. Local. Global. Very human. Very modern. Easy. Easy. 
Chiefs are speedy. Either way. Uh, you want to call 911 and do what they tell you uh, as far as uh, the dispatcher and the paramedics do uh, when, when they arrive. And also this idea of taking an aspirin, that'll make you feel better immediately. Well, there's, this message has gotten a little bit garbled. People are now taking aspirins in lieu of calling 911, or they're driving themselves to the drugstore to buy an aspirin to see if the pain doesn't go away. Wrong message. Uh, aspirin should be given by the people who arrive on the scene or over the phone as they tell you what to do. Taking an aspirin will not uh, treat you for a heart attack at home. It's not a home cure for a heart attack. And as you said at the beginning, a one-hour window of opportunity, really, well, is, is the what best we're talking time. About. Exactly. All right, Emily, thank you as okay, always. Okay, Jane. 7.52 now in our next hour. Ray Romano from Everybody Loves Raymond. We're back after this. CBS Health Watch, sponsored by Flonase Nasal Spray. Ask your doctor for more information. You can try anything to get some relief from your nasal allergy symptoms. But before you change your life, make an easier change. Multi-symptom Flonase relieves all these nasal allergy symptoms. Sneezing, itchy, runny nose, and congestion. Flonase once a day relieves them all, all day and night. For best results, use daily. Side effects are generally mild and may include headache, nosebleed, or sore throat. Ask your doctor about multi-symptom Flonase. When you get it all, all it takes is Flonase. Dogs love home cooking, or new pedigree little champions. Gently prepared, then sealed in our revolutionary flavor lock pouch for the home cooked taste dogs love. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing there? I'll be right there. Laundry. Laundry? But I'm glad you're up. I've been waiting to vacuum. Breakfast. I'll pick up your tray when I get back from the market. But it's Sunday. Aren't you going to lay around and watch football all day? Not if I'm going to finish that roast in time for dinner. Somebody had their minute made this morning. It only takes a minute, but the feeling lasts all day. Honey, what's the setting for chiffon? Riboflavin. It helps heal those bumps and bruises. And it's in Quaker oatmeal. Because someday, Jan might not think of a bandage as a fashion statement. Just another reason to start their day the Quaker way. Warms you heart and soul. Being a dance teacher really takes a toll on your skin. On your... And American 11 Heavy. I'm going to have to give you uh, Sierra and then Alpha to the Bravo hold point. So just hold short of Sierra for now. Hold short of Sierra, American 11 Heavy. It's so soft. The Latin Grammys heat up CBS. Wow. Join Christina Aguilera, Jimmy Smith, Lou Diamond Phillips, Jennifer Lopez, Mark Anthony, Destiny's Child, Luis Miguel, and Shakira. Wow. They'll be rocking the house. The Latin Grammys. It's the Grammys with a twist. Are we doing it tonight or what? Tonight, live only on CBS. Good morning, I'm Mike Buchanan in the news at 755. School leaders in Fairfax County say they're still awaiting official word on the standards of learning accreditation results. They say the unofficial results received last week don't give them enough data to make changes in the schools that are struggling. A Rockville. Um, did you want to be alone? Um, no. No? <laughs> Not at all. Okay. <laughs> The irony is I started doing this to be part of the crowd. Yeah, and now... me too. Oh, do you... No, no, I, I just quit. Nicoderm CQ. Aren't the cravings unbearable? Well, I'm not jumping, if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> no. CQ is good on the cravings. It's strong medicine. It's with you 24 hours. It works. Nicoderm CQ. Now in a clear patch, too. For a more personal way to quit. Quit, huh? Hey, join the crowd. This is a News 4 Today news break. Look at this day we have here in the nation's capital. Absolutely gorgeous out there, 65 degrees. If you like, it's a little bit on the chilly side. We'll check the forecast and the rush hour coming up shortly. Good morning, everyone. I'm Barbara Harrison. It's Tuesday, September 11th, 2001. In the news, work crews will start installing monitoring equipment today in a northeast Washington neighborhood, looking for signs of gasoline contamination. The gasoline leaked from a service station on the Maryland side of Eastern Avenue near Riggs Road 10 years ago. But now tests are being done to see if the gas has spread over the district line. 
In a story first on four, police in Prince George's County are looking for more people who may have been involved in an unusual theft ring. The suspects are accused of stealing hundreds of... American 11 Heavy Boston Tower. Good morning. Move right up two holes short of four right. After departure, maintain 3,000. Short of four right, uh, 3, 000, America, 11, heavy. The county is set to consider what could be the first countywide development tax. The county council is expected to begin the process today. The tax would loosen restrictions on growth around metro stops, but would discourage development elsewhere. This year's plan is said to be... American 11 heavy, runway four right, taxi in position, hold traffic departing niner. All right, position, hold America, 11, heavy. This news for today news break is sponsored by Frugal Fannies. It's not just a shoe, it's art for your feet. Hi, I'm Fanny, and I know how you feel about shoes. How they capture your mood. You've got lots of moods, so you need lots of shoes. At Frugal Fannies, choose from thousands of the latest brand name and designer shoes at 25 to 50% off list. You won't know whether to look at them or wear them. Frugal Fannies, new shipments this weekend. Falls Church, Rockville, Herndon, and across from Springfield Mall. Frugality, it starts with your feet. Tommy, you know what mystery meat is? Well, that's what's in these formed and pressed nuggets. United 175, Boston Garden, Gate 19, first pack approved. Pack approved. United 175. Get an individual size for only $1.99 or a party size for $6.99. There's fast food, and then there's KFC. Wednesday, all day, it's Macy's Super One Day Sale. American 11 heavy traffic's orbiting north of the field at 3,500 feet. Maintain 3,000 runway for right. Cleared for takeoff. Okay, three, clear for takeoff on four. I wanted to win. Win three, three, zero at Niner. And we'll have a breezy day with bright sunshine, the afternoon high, the low 80s, comfortably dry today, and a fresh breeze out of the northwest, about 10 to 20. Then tomorrow in the morning, even chillier than this morning, widespread 50s for lows, highs during the day. Tomorrow, the upper 70s, and maybe a shower passing through here Thursday evening from a weather front. Otherwise, we have dry weather all the way into the weekend. Thursday's high, mid-70s, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday ought to be just near 70. Now let's check on the traffic. Jerry, how's it going now? Hey, Tom, good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. It's been uh, quite busy. Let's take a live look and see how we're doing on the trip around town at this hour. We'll start in Germantown, where it's still loaded up and quite slow along the 270 corridor. A little place activity earlier, it's gone, but uh, from Father Hurley Boulevard, Route 27 on down in the thick of it. And a quick check on 95, still looking at delays headed north out of Newington to Springfield. Barbara? Thank you very much. Coming up on News 410, the state of the West Nile virus around our area. There is a concern. About American 11 heavy contact departure. That traffic's now in your 10 o'clock and two miles, 3,400 feet. Soil. Nope. Yeah, keep looking. Maybe the sun. Or just something in the air. Nope. Not here. But things just naturally seem to grow faster in the south. There you are. Lotto South, new from the Virginia Lottery. Current jackpot, $2 million. Whoa, it grows fast. We're back at 8 o'clock on this Tuesday morning. It's the 11th day of September 2001. You're looking at the people gathered outside our studio here on a sunny Tuesday morning. And we've obviously had a breach in security. That is Tracy Ullman, the very funny Tracy Ullman, working the crowd a little bit, talking to some of her friends. It's a wig. I thought it was real. I thought you had the most brilliant haircut. I'm just an idiot. I wish. Yeah, nice color. Very nice. Tracy's here and there for a good reason, because coming up in this half hour, Katie, you're going to be spending some more time with her? That's right. Tracy and I are like this these days. We hung out together on Sunday night at a fashion show and she'll be joining us this morning to tell us about a personal style show that she is hosting and producing. It is called Tracy Ullman's Visible Panty Lines. Hmm. I don't think we need to say anything more about that. We'll let Tracy do the talking in just a little while. see that one to believe it. Katie, we're also going to have more of our week-long special series on living longer, living better after the age of 50. This morning we'll focus on the role your mood can play in happy aging. And little... Good morning, America. 11 Heavy with you passing through uh, 2,000 for 3,000. American 11 Heavy, Boston departure radar contact. Good morning. Traffic 10 o'clock, 2 miles. Maneuvering Cessna Skyline VFR 3,500. Yeah, American 11. 
They needed a little time to get the camera from here to the news desk. So work with me here, people. It's fine. It's fine. We lost a guest. Give us my head. <laughs> anyway, that's all coming up. 801. Let's get to the top news stories of the morning. For that, we turn to Ann Curry. Because now we have a camera. Katie Matinell, thank you so much this morning. Good morning, everybody, again. For the second time in two weeks, the U.S. has lost an unmanned spy plane over Iraq. Iraq claims it shot down the remote-controlled Predator aircraft near Basra in the southern no-fly zone. U.S. Uh, military officials, however, say they lost contact with the plane, but they cannot confirm. American 11 Heavy, claim and maintain 8,000. 8,000 American 11 Heavy. The hearing to determine whether Andrea Yates is fit to stand trial. She's the Houston mother charged with drowning her five children. The jury will decide whether she is competent to assist her attorneys in a trial. If the case goes to trial, the uh, district attorney says he will seek the death penalty. Some relief for Congressman Gary Condit today. A grand jury in California has tossed out a complaint by flight attendant Anne Marie Smith. No it claimed Condit obstructed justice by trying to get her to sign an affidavit denying the two had an affair. Well, the grand jury says it doesn't have jurisdiction over the complaint. Smith's attorney plans to refile. Condit denies the affair and says he's never told anyone to lie. Call him the heir apparent. It's looking more and more like Michael Jordan is returning to the NBA. Monday, Jordan told reporters who asked him if he's coming back, quote, I'm doing it for the love of the game. But later, speaking to the Washington... American 11 Heavy, turn right hitting 1-8-0. 180 American 11 Heavy. ...by the middle of next week. Elizabeth Dole is expected to announce later today that she is running for the U.S. Senate. Dole, who ran unsuccessfully for president last year, wants to succeed retiring North Carolina Senator Jesse Helms. Her husband, Bob Dole, is the Senate's former Republican leader. Congress is urging the president to take new steps to jumpstart the economy. Among other things, Republicans want a capital gains tax cut. Well, today the president is visiting his second Florida elementary school in as many days to stress the importance of literacy programs. He's calling on Congress to finish work on his education plan. Today, First Lady Laura Bush testifies before Congress. She is uh, going to be talking to a Senate committee, Senate committee rather, about learning and early childhood. And one member of that committee is former First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton. Now here's Tom Brokaw with a look at what's coming up tonight on NBC Nightly News. Thanks, Ann. Tonight, three numbers that could save your life. 911, 190 million calls each year. But you won't believe the problems we found. Why some wait for hours for help. Information you need when seconds count. That and much more ahead tonight. Ann. All right, Tom. Thank you. It is now 8.04. And time for the weather and now. Today's weather is brought to you by Walmart. Always low prices. Always. Beautiful morning here in the Northeast. Let's American 11 heavy, turn right hitting 220. 220, American 11. Throughout much of the country, some showers in the northern plains, some wet weather down in Florida, where they'll be picking up as much as seven inches of rain in parts of central and southern Florida. Partly cloudy skies in the Pacific Northwest. The heat continues in the desert southwest, 106 in Phoenix. That's what's going on around the country. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. 65 cool, dry degrees here in northwest Washington. Good morning. I'm meteorologist Tom Kirin. A wonderful change overnight and a fresh, cool air mask going to be with us here for the next several days. And we will have the afternoon high reach just the low 80s today with comfortably dry weather. The breeze is out of the northwest about 10 to 20 miles an hour. Then tonight, a really chilly evening down into the 50s. And we'll see the afternoon high tomorrow just the upper 70s with bright sunshine. Thursday evening, slight chance of a passing shower. Otherwise, we'll have some cool, dry weather all the way into the weekend. 54th anniversary. What's your names? Antwistle. Richard and Phyllis. All right. You were here in New York City on your on, on your honeymoon. We got married in 47 in uh, Illinois. But well, we, uh, you came here for your honeymoon. Yeah. All right. That's what's up. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Happy anniversary. Now let's go back inside. Your team. All right, Al. Thank you very much. Next up, tips on how to live longer and better and how your moods can actually affect your health. But first, these messages. Well, we've been a band for about four years now, but we've been a family for over 16 years. Executive Suite making decisions. I mean, it may have seemed tangentially a good idea for him at the time. Um, the NBA, I think, is going to have a problem with this because no matter what they say publicly about how wonderful this is, and their ratings will be huge when he mm -hmm. comes back, if he comes back. The fact is, David Stern, the commissioner, and the owners have known for a long time that the day is going to come when they have to go on without Jordan. And they've done it twice already. And if he comes back, they're going to smile and welcome him, but they're going to realize, you know, they're just delaying the inevitable. There's going to be a day they have to live without Jordan, but it's not 
the NBA's decision. It's Michael's decision. And he, so many people for so long have put their own expectations on him. If he does this, I think he's doing it for himself. Absolutely. He, he, wants to, he wants to, you know, in his life, enjoy it. Ultimately, Michael makes decisions, that's right, uh, for himself in that regard. Bob, you know, you, you've got your finger on the pulse there in Chicago. It's sad in a way that it isn't happening in Chicago, that this is happening in Washington. And do you think part of this is Michael trying to stick it to general manager Jerry Krause and the Bulls, a Bulls team he probably should still be a part of? Uh, there's certainly that is a part of it. But while the rest, you're right, while the rest of the world, should this happen, is going to say, isn't it amazing to watch Jordan back on a basketball court again? In Chicago, of course, it's going to be, here's Jordan, and the shirt says Washington on it. Um, <laughs> it's not going to compute real well here, and I think Chicago is going to be sort of watching it through squinted eyes. It's going to be, it's going to be a big international story, should it happen. But locally in Chicago, it's going to be a pretty depressing <laughs> thing to see. I mean, you've got, you've got the statue of Jordan in front of the United Center, but he told me once that he never even looks at the statue mm. because he says, I'm not a statue, I'm a person. Well, all they have is the statue now. Bob Green, thank you very much for your perspective. We appreciate thank you joining you us much. this morning. Thanks. Thank you. He's not a person, he's a legend. <laughs> yeah, That's why this is such a big deal. He's an icon there in Chicago. Right. No and every 40 year old man is looking at him going, Yo, go. You know what? I could get back in shape. And, I think, <laughs> no. and we'll be there to cover it. And walk a flight of stairs. All right, let's walk over to Kira <laughs> Phillips, who's taking a look at the news today. Morning, Kira. Hi, guys. Well, we begin in the Middle East this morning, where Israeli tanks surround the West Bank town of Janine earlier today. Gun battles broke out between local gunmen and Israeli forces, leaving several Palestinians wounded. Israel says it sealed Janine because it was the staging ground for dozens of attacks by Palestinian militants. Meanwhile, truce talks tentatively set today between Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat and Israeli Foreign Minister Shimon Peres. They have been postponed. In Australia, a federal judge overturned the government's decision to turn away some 400 asylum seekers. The court says the mostly Afghan migrants now on their way to Papua New Guinea aboard a Navy ship must be allowed to land in Australia. Government officials say they will appeal the court's ruling. Jury selection begins today for a Texas hearing that will determine whether Andrea Yates is fit to stand trial. She's the Houston mother, you may remember, that was accused of drowning her five children in a bathtub in June. She's charged with two counts of capital murder for drowning three of them. Elizabeth Dole is expected to throw her hat into the ring today. She's expected to announce she's running for Jesse Helms' Senate seat in North Carolina. The announcement comes in Salisbury, North Carolina, her hometown. Dole once served as Secretary of Transportation and Secretary of Labor. Her husband, Bob, was defeated in the 1996 presidential race. Next, the safety of children's toys. Consumer advocates say they're not safe enough. They say the biggest danger, children choking to death. 16 children under 12 died from toy-related injuries in 19. Nine of them choked to death. Consumer advocates say manufacturers should do more to guarantee toy safety. The governor of California. California. Boston Center, good morning, American 11 with you. Passing through 190 for 230. American 11, Boston North Center, Roger Clement, maintain level 280. 7,000 acre fire in Calaveras County is 50% contained now. So far, none of the county's 7,500 residents has been without water, but they've been asked to conserve. Carolyn Vince. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Kira. <laughs> All right, it's your turn, everybody. We are asking what you think of Michael Jordan's return to the NBA. Why don't you drop us a line? What are you waiting for? Daybreak at CNN.com. Be sure to include your name, where you're writing from. We'll get to the emails a little bit later in this hour. I'm interested to see what people have to say. Yeah, make it juicy. In the meantime, you can go to our website and make your voice heard. You can go hmm. to CNN.com and cast your vote and check that out. Wow. Do you think Michael Jordan should return to play in the NBA? And so far, 66% there. Saying no. I'm surprised, just from a curiosity factor. To see him, you wouldn't you want to see him just take the court one more no, time? No, because you can't replete a first love. You know, I, I just think that people are afraid he's going to stumble, and every time he goes out there, it's going to be three times more embarrassing. Michael's an elite athlete. I think he knows what he's doing. We're he wouldn't see. do this if he didn't have a plan. You know, all the ticket sales through the roof. I mean, it's going to be sold out. Still to come, though. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, this issue of tired of waiting outside in you know the summer heat or driving rain to see the U.S. Capitol. Soon you won't have to. CNN has an inside look at the Visitor Center renovations.
And a little bit later, the eye of the storm getting out of danger might be the most dangerous thing about a hurricane. Uh, take us through babycenter.com. What's the big deal on that one? Well, when I had my first child, you had a big book and you, you know, were constantly pulling it out to see where you were um, in the development process. This site has fantastic visuals, really, really terrific. And you can actually have an email sent to you on a week by week basis in technology From terms. From the site? Yeah, it's called having something pushed to you. And what's nice is there are a lot of weeks in a pregnancy. So when it arrives in your mailbox, you think, all right, yes, another week. And it will tell you, here's what the baby is going through. Here's how you should be feeling. Here's some things you need to do prepare. And that's a free site? It is free. Oh, interesting. Um, take us through DrSpock.com. Yeah, Dr. Spock, a very familiar name. Benjamin is now, lives on. Yeah, he's online, a very, very popular site, well organized, in that you can find information by age, if you've got an infant, a toddler, someone in elementary school, and by topic. So that's a that's a worthwhile one to check out. All right. Um, isn't it a little dangerous? I mean, shouldn't you be speaking with your doctor whenever you have a question? I mean, you shouldn't be going online to ask questions, should you? Well, it's a great point, and it's not a substitute. I've talked to a lot of experts who say the real red flag is when a parent walks into a pediatrician's office and says, I've got it all figured out. Or worse yet, they don't walk in because they think they have it all figured out. Mm -hmm. So it's important to use it as a supplemental resource. American 11 traffic set at uh, 2 o'clock, 2 zero miles southwestbound, MD 80, 310. American 11 traffic. Moms talking to moms. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Parenting.com. What's that one give us? Yeah, parenting.com is a fun one. They have a budget calculator. United 175, heavy hold, short of runway, fall left, monitor tower 128.8. 128 28, hold, short of four left. I'd love to get a new crib, I'd love to do this. And then you do the math and you think, okay, well, let's go back. And they give, you, <laughs> they give you an itemized list because what you need and what you want might be two very different things. Oh, very good. I like that. Good planner. All right, this one I'm kind of surprised at. Baby Namer, Moms Online. Yeah, well, this is the fun part. Come on. We used to all buy books and look at the various names. That's all digitized now. Um, and it, United 175 Heavy, taxi in a position hold Niner. Uh, the meaning of your baby's name and even names you can expect them that maybe they'll be teased. So maybe you want to be careful about what name you pick. You got a name picked already? I do. It is? Will. Will. Mm -hmm. uh, babystyle.com. Yeah, shopping. Uh, now, -da. oh yeah, they've got everything and then some. What's nice about this also. How will she tie them both together? I don't know. It's in the news and business. Morning, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. I don't know if you would call this food, though. That's the only problem, Carol. Morning, Oops. Vince. Uh, we're looking at uh, stock market futures gaining some ground here. It looks like there could be a nice pop when market action gets going, a little more than an hour. It's ketchup maker Heinz that we're talking about. H.J. Heinz and high-end retailer Neiman Marcus. Uh, we're watching shares of both. Both are out with quarterly results. Heinz posted slightly lower profit from a year ago. Neiman Marcus reported a wider-than-expected loss. American 11 turned 20 degrees, right? Pretty right, American 11. To meet earnings estimates for the third quarter, and that's helping its shares rally in the pre-market, even though it also warned on sales for the quarter. And Dell is out with some bullish comments. The PC maker says it's well positioned for recovery in the... American 11, no climbing table level 350. United 175, heavy runway 9 are cleared for takeoff traffic, holding a position on 4 right. American 11, climbing table level 350. American 11, Boston. Earth 7, Mike Lima, how do you hear? Mike Lima, has you last clear? American 11, Boston. American 1-1, one, one, uh, the American on the frequency, how do you hear me? This is uh, Adam. This is Boston. I turned American 20 left and I was going to climb him. He will not respond to me now. Oh, looks all. like he's turning right. Yeah, I turned him 20 right. Oh, okay. And he's only going to, uh, I think, 29. Okay. Hello? Sure, that's fine. Uh, but you I'm want not talking to him. He's Nardo. Roger. All right. Thanks. For 7 Mike Lima, descend at pause discretion, maintain for level 240. PDM 240 will begin down. Mike Lima. American 11, Boston. American 11, if you hit Boston Center, I dent. Ross 
Atlantic uh, 683, flight level 210, climb 230. Final 683, Boston Center, Roger, climb maintain for level 310. Climb maintain for level 310. American 11, if you hear Boston Center, I den, please, or acknowledge. Shell, count on shell. We're in the islands, exploring the only volcano in the world you can bike from top to bottom. United 175 heavy, turn right, heading 210. Turn 210, United 175 heavy. We experience what it was like to spend a day in the clouds. Great trips stay with you forever. On Travelocity, we'll show you a calendar of choices for the price you want. Because a great fare isn't great if it's not available when you are. Travelocity. Go virtually anywhere. Oh, uh, say, can I have the new software IT didn't approve? Fred, I promise... So right, okay. American 11, if you hear Boston Center, uh, recontact Boston Center on 127.82. That's American 11, 127.82. So you get the solutions you need when you need them. Like the entire family of HP network storage products, from single tape drives to automated libraries, with the reliability you expect from HP. Fred, here is another request that can't be done in time. HP and CDW, computing solutions built for business. So if you're a Washington Wizards fan, or heck, if you're an NBA fan, you're probably having a heart attack this morning hearing that Michael Jordan is expected to return to the court. American 11, American 1-1, Boston. Audrey Barnes, who's been hearing... United 175 heavy, turn right heading 270. Michael Jordan outside his Chicago restaurant last night, and he all but confirmed that he did indeed plan to return to the basketball court wearing a Washington Wizards uniform. He says he'll make an official announcement sometime in the middle of next week. Now, for the last five months, Michael has been putting himself to a very physical test. He's been scrimmaging with the likes of Penny Hardaway, Juwan Howard. He says there's a little bit of tendonitis in his right knee, but other than that, he is ready to go. Now 175 heavy boss, we're both fighting 270. 270 on the heading, guys, 175. He's holding league meetings in Orlando on September 20th, and Michael Jordan is expected to announce his intentions before that. If he should return to basketball, the Wizards say they are prepared for a flurry of last-minute ticket purchases. Also, plans are already in the works to televise as many Wizards games as possible. Reporting live from the MCI Center, Carol, back to you. Yeah, you can bet on that, Audrey. Thanks so much. Audrey Barnes standing outside the MCA, MCI Center where they're expecting Michael might be playing soon. Michael could be taking the floor over there, no doubt about that. All right, from a basketball legend now to a real American hero. Millions of people visit the U.S. Capitol each year, some standing in line for hours waiting to get inside. And now a multi-million dollar visitor center expansion project is underway to make the Capitol more visitor friendly. Former Senator John Glenn is a spokesman for the project, and he's in Washington and joins us now. Good morning, sir. Great to have you. Good morning. Glad to be with you. Um, it's interesting to me how you came to uh, be a part of this project. It goes back to your childhood when you were a visitor to our nation's capital. Can you tell us about well, that? Well, it does. You know, when I was about eight years old, uh, I remember our first visit to Washington. American 11, Boston. That's been many years ago <laughs> now. And I remember to this day, though, uh, walking into that capital and looking up at the rotunda and then visiting each of the two. American 77, your departure frequency will be 125.05, runway 30, clear for takeoff. clear for takeoff, runway 30, American 77. Say that led me into the paths of where I went <laughs> later on, but uh, it, it certainly gave me an awareness and an appreciation for the capital and for our country. And I think the four million visitors that come here to the capital each year deserve much better than to stay. Center 175, heavy contact, Boston Center 133.42. 3342, United 175, heavy good day is uh, what this will eventually look like. You'll have a visitor center in here. They can enter under here. Uh, there will be uh, movies and artifacts and things like that that will be uh, available. It'll be, it'll be th three things, really. Educational, number one for the kids coming in there, and inspirational. And I don't underrate that. I think that's a very important part of this whole thing. And number three, it provides far better security so we don't have uh, some of these incidents like we had where some of the policemen got killed here a few years ago. Right, and that, there certainly are safety issues involved, and I know that there is not only long lines and long... American 11, American 1-1, how do you hear the center? Well, the safety issues are a very important one because this will give a more controlled flow than just having people milling around out here on this, on the east plaza that we have here right now. 
Uh, there'll be entryways in here that you can go into the Capitol, into the uh, House or the Senate chamber over here. And uh, also another factor, you know, we're a focal point of the whole world. The Capitol building is a symbol of our democracy. We have many foreign visitors come here from all over the world, and most of them want to visit the Capitol. Uh, this is a far more impressive and, and a far better way, I think, of taking care of all the visitors, foreign and our own people here as well. Senator Glenn, uh, how much money is needed for this project and where will this money come from? Well, Congress appropriated $100 million. The, the whole thing is estimated to cost about $265 million. There have been about 35 pledged from corporations so far. We hope to raise a, uh, $100 million from the rest of that $100 million from private sources, and that's what this drive is all about. We hope everybody can, can participate in this. It's, uh, uh, everybody should. Because, you know there's a precedent for this also. Uh, uh, I might have preferred myself to see a, a Congress just appropriate the money and do it. But we have a history, for instance, just a few years ago when they wanted to refurbish the statue on top of the Capitol. That was all done with private funds. So there is some uh, precedent for this. Senator Glenn, do you feel that Washington, D.C. is the tourist attraction or maybe the tourist mecca that it should be? Well, no. Well, I think it is probably the biggest single tourist attraction in this country. Everyone, every family, you know, we have polls that show that I think it's like three-fourths of the people want to take their family to Washington, want their kids to experience coming to this, uh, this capital city, this leadership city for the whole world, literally. And uh, so we're, in a way, we're just responding to what the people of this country already want. Uh, I'd like to see more visitors to Washington also, not just from a, a money standpoint of tourists and business, uh, but for the, the appreciation of what we have here, the Capitol, Arlington, uh, the monuments, Washington Monument, Lincoln uh, Memorial, mm -hmm. uh, things like that I think are very, very impressive and, and give people a feel of, of their part, their participation in this country when they have a chance to come here and visit. Well, sir, before we go, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about your 1998 space mission. And can you tell us what was learned uh, from that mission in terms of... Boston, United 175, that is uh, 19, up. United 175, Boston, no, Senator Roger. That from that, what we were up there, what I was up there to see was, you know, when the younger people go up there, they have uh, certain things uh, happen to their bodies. Osteoporosis sets in. The body's immune system changes, become less resistant to disease and infection. Uh, protein replacement in the muscles uh, changes. Now, those are the same things that happen to the elderly uh, to a large extent right here on Earth. So the idea was to compare my reactions to going into space again with the younger people with the objective of seeing if we can't find out what turns these systems on and off in the human body. And we're making strides in that area too. And the, uh, the idea being not only to permit longer term space flight, but also to take away some of the frailties of old age right here on Earth. That's exciting to think that maybe we opened the door for some things like that. And so uh, the experiments are going on. I'm hoping they'll put more people up there in my age bracket. So we have a database in a few years. It means a lot more than just a database of, of one, which is me right now. Athens is Rockdale. A couple things. Point out north and west of Rockdale is in San Francisco, 96. What happened, Hey, also, are you trying to get through the company on the American Marathon? We're trying everything here. Is he really got no transplant to screw up or what? It appears that way. No kidding. Hi. I'll tell you, he's a legend. Looking good. Looking good. All right, we're going to take another look at another cool science story. Picture this a massive hurricane, and towns are forced to evacuate. Mm. The problem is there's too much traffic for the roads to handle. Gridlock on the escape route. And who, maybe it's what, is walking down the runway this spring? We're going to give you a look at the latest fashions when we return. Ask yourself this. When was the last time you sat completely still? 30 minutes, 6, 7, 4, is that American 11 trying to call? Buddy, we have some planes. Just stay quiet and you'll be okay. We're returning to the airport. 15 Southwest, the phone is going to Hampton. And uh, who's trying to call me here? American 11, are you trying to call? Nobody move. Everything will be okay. If you try to make any move, you'll danger yourself and the airplane. Just stay quiet. This is a News for Today news break.
Beautiful bright sunshine out there this morning as we look at Dulles Airport, 825 is the time, 67 degrees. We'll check the forecast and the rush hour coming up. Good morning, I'm Joe Krebs on this Tuesday, September 11th. In the news for today, Michael Jordan may be coming back to play. Is there any chance he gets uh, direct flip this morning? Uh, not right now. Go ahead, 38. Yeah, American 11. Uh, we suspect there's someone in the cockpit that's taken over. We have just put him in direct Watertown, Jamestown. Last we knew, he was on present heading, cleared to flight level 290. No one is talking to him. Eric has been called. We broadcasted on guard. We tried through company. Okay, thanks. And 290 is not verified. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. 14-year-old Yolanda Beard and 3-year-old Shante Adams were last seen on Sunday evening around 5 o'clock in the 1200 block of Brentwood Road Northeast. Yolanda is 5 feet 2 inches tall and she weighs 90 pounds. She was wearing a blue shirt and light blue blouse. Shante Adams is 2 feet tall and she weighs just 30 pounds. She was wearing blue pants and a white blouse. If you have any information about either girl, please call D.C. Police. And the district school budget is $80 million in the red, and that's going to mean some changes in the way the school system operates. School Board President Peggy cooper Kafritz blames the shortfall in incompetence, and she says the schools will try to close the deficit without affecting the lives of students. We're going to take a break right now, come back and take a look at our forecast and the rush hour. This news for Because he was just heading that way, yes. Yeah, we've taken the American back because he appears to have turned. Yep, thanks. Flagship 5616, Bob. Oh, sorry. Do what? 230, Flagship 5616. Over. Go ahead. Yeah, I need you to look west of Albany, American 11, and put him on your scope. He is, uh, Nordo has been since he talked to Boston High. We assume he's at flight level 290. Uh, we're not sure. We think there's someone in the cockpit with him. Um, we broadcasted over guard. We've gone Eric. We have gone company. Uh, nobody is talking to him. We don't know where he's going. We don't know what altitude he's at. Okay. Okay. Thanks. But I can actually see it happen. That just warms my heart. I feel good about it, you know. If you give parents a choice, that gives kids a chance. It's about the kids. Well, we had a wonderful change overnight. Good morning, I'm meteorologist Tom Kieran. We swept out the high humidity and in comes some fresh, cool, dry air. 67 here at NBC4 and at National Airport with a fresh breeze out of the west-northwest. And it'll be gusting today 10 to 20 miles an hour with bright sunshine, highs reaching the low 80s. Tomorrow, bright and sunny after a chilly start in the 50s, should reach the upper 70s. And then Thursday evening, there's a slight chance of a passing shower. Otherwise, we've got dry weather into the weekend with Friday, Saturday, and Sunday's highs just near 70. Now let's check on that traffic. Jerry Edwards, how's it going this morning? Uh, Tom, it has been a little rocky. Good morning, everyone. Let's head south and show you the outer loop of the Beltway just crawling from Eisenhower Avenue passing Telegraph Road. An accident there has just been moved to the shoulder, but a very painful trip indeed. It looks like it's improving a little bit, picking up a little bit of speed now on 270 out of Germantown. Back to you. Thanks, Jerry. Coming up on News 410, the state of the West Nile virus around our area and the nation. And there's new concern this morning. Another local news update in 25 minutes. Stay with us. Most people don't mean to be hurtful, but when you're really overweight, you hear all the comments. So you learn to build a wall around yourself to block out what you don't want to hear. Then I overheard someone talking about Jenny Craig, and I'm glad I listened. There's never been a better time to join Jenny Craig with their personalized one-on-one -on -one counseling. And now, for a limited time, lose 20 pounds for $20, plus the cost of food. Call 1-800-JENNY-20. I was at a party recently, and I overheard this woman say she looks absolutely beautiful. And you know what? She was talking about me. Today, cable companies like AT&T control over 70% of high-speed Internet connections because they compete under different rules than phone companies. Unless Congress acts, millions will be left behind or with only one choice, their cable company. Now a study says a delay in high-speed Internet rollout could cost our economy $500 billion. Tozan Dingle guarantees access to inner cities and small towns and would add billions to our economy. Back in New York, Boston, uh, I got a little situation with American 11, American 11. He is a uh, 767 departed Boston going to LAX. Uh, we don't know where the aircraft is going. He uh, is uh, supposedly going to LAX. Uh, was going westbound. We lost his uh, frequency. Then we lost his transponder, and now the aircraft is uh, just west of Albany, heading due south. Oh, my goodness. Okay. 
We have, do we have the, uh, the data block on him? Who's got the... Yeah, we, we have, we're, it's a primary target presently, and, and it's just hidden uh, southwest mountain. Okay. Um, I no, understand. I'll go to right now. I'll, I'll advise the area. The last altitude that I observed there was a flight level 290. 29. Heading in the southwest mountain. He's like towards uh, Hancock, uh, right, uh, right around there. He's uh, southwest of Albany by one five miles. Do you have no idea where he's going? No idea, sir. All right. You can tag him on the uh, TSD. Yeah, I do take him up. Primary only? Primary only. Okay. We'll okay. Thank you. For years, it's finally come to fruition. It's an anthology of black music, and it's called The Long Road to Freedom. Also, we're going to talk about Howard Hughes, the reclusive billionaire, died alone, except for the people he paid to be with him. There have been a lot of books written about him, but now author uh, Richard Hack has written what he calls the definitive... Boston, Boston, 175 Boston Center Roger. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Anyway, lots to get to, but before we do, we've got another check of the weather from Mr. Roker. Al, it is such a pretty morning, it isn't is it? It's a perfect fall morning here. Yeah. Although it's not fall yet, so <laughs> it's still a perfect summer morning. And uh, good advice, hug a nurse today. Where are you from? Youngstown, Ohio. Youngstown, what are you doing Saint here? Elizabeth. Just hanging out? Just on vacation. Who are you here with? My son and my husband. All right. <laughs> well, you're sandwiched. Yes, it's please. a mom nurse sandwich. We like that. And I got a buddy over here who's going, Al, show me some love. I, I just love, I love the hair. I love the hair. I'm showing you some love. SOC, Ray Howland. Ray Holland, Nancy Wyatt, uh, Boston Flight Service. Yes. Okay, we've got the flight attendants on the line here. You do have them on the line? On the plane, yeah. Can you conference them in with us? I have no idea how to do that. If you can help me out. Um, hold, uh, he's getting some information here. Uh, I'm going to read his notes for you. Um, it looks like uh, he's Middle Eastern, he speaks no English. He was in 10B, 10 Baker, 9D and G, speaks no, speaks no English. Uh, the plane's in a rapid descent. Uh, is the cockpit still? Yes. Okay, the flight attendants are concerned they don't know what's going on in the cockpit. Are you in con contact with them? No, we're not. That's true. We're, we're trying to get in contact with the cockpit. Okay. No, you'll feel like you're different. Okay. Uh, we don't really want to tell her that. Okay, don't. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay, they're, um, we're not sure. Um, okay, it looks like there is severe bleeding that, uh, okay. he's keeping them, keeping her on the line. Um, there's severe bleeding. There is a slashed throat. Michael, is that severe? Is that last vote a flight attendant? No. It's a surprise. Seven Democrats and two Republicans are fighting for those nominations. And in Cincinnati, two men who once shared a local TV news anchor desk, current Mayor Charlie Lucan and Curtis Fuller, are the front runners in the city's first nonpartisan primary for mayor. This reverses the career switch of Jerry Springer, who was the first Cincinnati mayor and then became a TV star. Hey, we got options. Nobody move, please. Uh, going back to the airport. Don't try to make any stupid moves. Closet, couldn't we? <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> All right. Thank you, See Kira. See you later. All right. This week is traditionally the peak of hurricane season. We're doing a series of reports we call the Eye of the Storm. Today, evacuation gridlock. We'll start with CNN's John Zarella, who's in the Florida Keys live this morning. John is with us. Good morning, John. Morning, Vince. Let me tell you, emergency managers and hurricane forecasters will always tell you you can run from the water and you can hide from the wind. That means you've got to get out of the way for storm surge, but you can usually hide from the wind. But let me show you the Florida Keys here. This is Isla Mirada. That's the only way out of the Florida Keys. That one road, it's a two lane road. So here in the Florida Keys, you've got to run from the water and run from the wind both. You really don't have a whole lot of options. But no matter where you live, if you are ordered to evacuate, it may be far more difficult than you think. As Hurricane Floyd moved north along the Atlantic coast. Okay, Trey, on. Yeah, hi, uh, are you uh, able to, are we able to talk to Otis on this line? Um, I'm not sure, but if I need, if you need to get in touch with him, I can, uh, right, I, have seven, I think that was a seven line. I have no situation with the uh, American 11. 
What? I have a situation with American 11. Do you want to talk to Otis Power? I want to talk to uh, Otis Street. I need to scramble some uh, fighters. All right, well, hold on a second. Let me get you the soup. Making land, but next time might be different. I really fear that someday we're going to have people stuck in their cars in a gridlock as the core of a major hurricane moves on shore. If they're stuck in their car and that storm surge comes in, they'll be lost alive from drowning. Hundreds, perhaps thousands, may feel fear. Kennedy, Kingston 93. Kennedy. Here's a heads up for you here. I got an American 11. He's right over Kingston right now. He's, we think he's at flight level 290. There appears to be some possible problem with him. He departed Boston going to uh, Los Angeles. But uh, somewhere along the way here, he took a left turn, and he's not talking to anyone. Hasn't talked to anybody in about 75, maybe 100 miles. So he's southeastbound right now, so he's going to pass just like over Carmel. And again, we don't have a verified altitude. We think he's a flight level 290. We're trying to verify that. You have a now. code on him? Uh, no, he's just playing x ray. He's, there's no code on the guy. He's playing x ray, and we can prove that. So he's the primary right now. Right over King right. now, flight level 290, supposedly. Supposedly 290, and he's headed southeastbound? Headed southeastbound right now. Like he's going to go between, uh, looks like maybe right over Dewey's intersection. So I'm just giving you a heads up. We're not talking to him. No one's talked to him about the last 20 minutes. Now what's the call sign? Uh, American 11. American 11. Yeah, I'll, I'll call you when he gets on close to your boundary, okay? Okay. Fuel on US 1. The next day, the roads cleared. Wagner orders a phase one evacuation, tourists and non residents. Then Hurricane Debbie unexpectedly falls apart. As Carla moves slowly in from the Gulf. A generation ago, evacuation worked pretty well. Back in the 40s and 50s and 60s, if we gave people 12 hours of warning, that was sufficient. Okay, United 175, you have them much at 12 o'clock now, in five, 10 miles. Uh, affirmative, we have them. Uh, he looks about 20, yeah, about 29, 28,000. Okay, thank you. That's not a solution. What I'm saying is every new community that goes up, whenever you give the permitting process for this development, they ought to be required to have a shelter <laughs> right on site. So for now, evacuation grid. Roger, Sergeant Powell. Hi, Boston Center, TMU. We have a, a problem here. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New, New York, and we need you guys to, we need someone to scramble some F-16s or something up there to help us out. Is this, is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise, not a test. Okay, hey, uh, hold on one second, okay? Yes. Hey, 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 this is John Zarella reporting live from Isla Morada in the Florida Keys. All right, thank you very much, John Zarella. Wow, great pictures there to illustrate the uh, power of the storm. We remind, uh, remind you, tune in Sunday for a special hurricane report when the big one hits Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern Time on CNN Presents. All right, but surely Dave Hannon's looking out on the horizon, seeing if there's any hurricane action out there. What's it looking like, Dave? There is indeed uh, hurricane action uh, today. Fortunately, though, this big hurricane, uh, Aaron, is going to move away uh, from the the U.S. Uh, winds at uh, one point yesterday up to 120 miles per hour. You see the eye of Hurricane Aaron and, and look how close it is to the coast. The uh, thing that's going to happen though is this uh, frontal system moving off the east coast is going to pick up the hurricane and begin to move it a little bit farther off towards the east. In fact, it is now moving north. It was moving northwest yesterday. So that turn has already begun. Winds still pretty strong though. 90 miles per hour sustained. It is forecast to continue though, as we said though, to push away from land. In fact, not expected to affect the Canadian Maritimes either moving into the North Atlantic. That's uh, what we're expecting with that storm. We are watching another storm too. This is Tropical Depression number seven, which is located way out in the Atlantic. Same story here. This storm is forecast to go north uh, uh, through the island. So either storm. Can I get New York Tracon? You bet. So nothing with the uh, cockpit? Yes, yeah, with American 11. Say again? Oh, a reference to American 11. Right, have you had any contact with him yet? Uh, no, no contact. Uh, it is confirmed uh, hijacked, though. Tracon. Okay. Hey, Tracon. Hi, Boston Center. Uh, good morning. It's American 11. Uh, 767 possible hijack. Okay, American 11, 75, seven, uh, and uh, Destin. Where's he landing? Uh, right now, we don't have any idea, but uh, he was to the northwest of Albany, and now he's uh, down by Sparta, Newton Speed. 
okay. very rapidly. We believe these days primary only, and uh, we believe he's on the descent. That's why he's uh, he's he's wow. slowing down. <laughs> Where will you find the money to pay for long-term care? <laughs> Conseco long-term care insurance protects you so you don't lose your nest egg. Conseco, step up. Yippee! Woohoo! Yes! We are in the this sweet spot now, baby. This market is incredible. Me five. There is no stopping us now. This the market sky is, is the limit. Incredible. Nasdaq. They expect the Nasdaq to surge above 6,000. Rather than feel nostalgic for days gone by, a Merrill Lynch financial advisor can help reallocate your portfolio to better navigate today's up and down market. Is it even close to running out? So while we can't bring back the past, NASDAQ 10, we can make the future something to look forward to. We can expect, Amy. United 93, win 3307, runway 4 left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 4 left, United 93. Nice pitch. Nortel Networks is building the new high-performance internet, the wireless internet with optical... New York, United 175, have you? United 175, go ahead. Uh, we figured we'd wait to go to your center. Um, we heard a suspicious transmission uh, on our departure out of Boston uh, with someone, uh, uh, someone see the mic and said, uh, everyone uh, stay in your seats. Okay, I'll pass that along over here. Hey, Kingston 93 line, go ahead. The United 175 just came on my frequency, and he said that they heard a suspicious uh, transmission when they were leaving Boston. Oh, yeah? Uh, everybody stay in their seat. That's what they heard is a suspicious transmission. Now, that U.S. Air 583 thought the American he spotted them was at 29. Leather, lace, and everything in between, it is all moving down the catwalk at Fashion Week in New York. And CNN's Gail O'Neill has been braving the crowds to see what some of us, at least, are going to be wearing, maybe the most pregnant of us. Morning, Gail. Morning, Carol. I'll tell you, this is the biggest media crush I've seen so far, and it's all over maternity wear. I'm backstage at the Liz Lang Maternity Show, and it's rock and roll back here. We have media from all over the... American Airlines emergency line, please state your emergency. Hey, this is Nitty American Airlines calling. I am monitoring a call in which Flight 11, the flight attendant is advising our reps that the pilot, everyone's been stabbed. Flight 11? Yep. They can't get into the cockpit is what I'm hearing. Okay, who's this I'm talking to? Excuse me, this is Nitty American Airlines at the Raleigh Reservation Center. I'm the operations specialist on duty. I'm sorry, what was your name again? Nydia. Nydia. And what's your last name? Gonzalez, G-O-N-C-A-L-E-Z. Raleigh Reservations, okay. I have a flight attendant on the line with one of our agents. Okay. And she's calling how? Through reservations. I can go in on the line and ask the flight attendant questions. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm assuming they've declared an emergency. Let me get ATC on here. Stand by. Got any contact with anybody? No. Okay, I'm still on with security. Okay, Betty? You're doing a great job. Just, just stay calm, okay? We are. Absolutely. Okay, we're contacting a flight crew now. We're all con uh, we're also contacting ATC. Okay. Anything else from this flight attendant? Um, so far what I've got, the number five flight attendant's been stabbed, but she seems to be breathing. The number one seems to be stabbed pretty badly, and she's lying down on the floor. They don't know whether she's conscious or not. The other flight attendants are in the back, um, and that's as far as I know. It seems like the passengers in the coach might not be aware of what's going on right now. These two passengers were from first class. Okay, hold on. Hey, Betty. Do you know any information as far as the gentleman men that are in the cockpit with the pilot? Were they from first class? They were sitting in two A and B. They are in the cockpit with the pilot. Who's helping them? Is there a doctor on board? Is there a doctor on board, Betty, that's helping you guys? You don't have any doctors on board, okay. So you've gotten all the first class passengers out of first class?
Have they taken everyone out of first class? Yeah, she's just saying that they have. They're in coach. What's going on, honey? Okay, the aircraft is erratic again. Bobbing very erratically. She did say that all the first class passengers have been moved back to coach. So first class, the cabin is empty. What's going on on your end, Craig? Uh, we contacted air traffic control. They are going to handle this as a confirmed hijacking. So they're moving all the traffic out of this aircraft's way. Okay. Uh, he turned his transponder off, so we don't have a definitive altitude for him. Uh, we're just going by. They, they seem to think that they have him on a primary radar. They seem to think that he is descending. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Lydia? Yes, dear, I'm here. Okay. I have the dispatcher currently taking the current fuel on board, uh -huh. and uh, we're going to run some profiles okay. to see exactly what his endurance is. Okay. She, she doesn't have an idea who the other passenger might be in first. Apparently they might have spread something, so it's, it's um, they have a hard time breathing or getting in that area. What's going on, Betty? I want to Manhattan. We just had a, a plane crash into Alpha 4 of the World Trade Center, transmit a second alarm, and start relocating companies into the area. Okay, so we'll, like, we'll stay open. We, I think we might have lost her. When it comes to lending and leasing to businesses and consumers, CIT stands apart. Because when you combine nearly a century of experience with dedication, desire, and imagination, you... The World Trade said that tower number one is on fire. The whole outside of the building was just a huge explosion. Wonder that today's business leaders put their trust in today's financing leader, CIT. With posted pop-up notes in the handy dispenser, you always know where your notes are. Anybody copy? Okay. Say that again, please. I said we, we, well, looks like we lost the primary target about 20 west of Kennedy, and we had a report of an EOT in the area. We're going to, uh, I guess we'll, uh, get some Coast Guard activity up there. Well, we've lost the track, too. Hey, Boston, this is New York, uh, what type of aircraft was the American? Number 67. This is the ACI watch. Say again, if you lost uh, track of the aircraft, over. Boston has lost track, and on our frequency, we have confirmed that it was a hijack. That's on the tapes. Yeah, New York confirms we've lost the track as well, and we were, uh, we got a report of an ELT in the area that the track was in. Kennedy Tower reports, are you serious? Kennedy Tower reports that there was a fire at the World Trade Center. And that's, uh, that's the area where we lost the airplane. <laughs> Would you like to lower your monthly mortgage? Engine 1 on Manhattan. Engine 1 on, go. Roll every available ambulance you got to this position. This just in, you are looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. The CNN Center right now is just beginning to work on this story, obviously calling our sources and trying to figure out exactly what happened, but clearly something relatively devastating happening this morning there on the south end of the island of Manhattan. That is, once again, a picture of one of the towers of the World Trade Center. We can see these pictures. It's obviously uh, something devastating has happened. And again, unconfirmed report that a plane has crashed into one of the towers there. We are efforting more information on this subject as it becomes available to you. 
Right now we've got Sean Murtaugh. He is a CNN producer on the telephone right now. Sean, what can you tell us about what you know? This is uh, Sean Murtaugh. I just was uh, standing on the uh, uh, vice president of finance. Sean. Vice president of finance for CNN. Sean, we're on the air right now. What, what can you tell us about this situation? Hello? Yes, yeah, Sean, you're on the air yes, right yes. now. Uh, can, what can, go ahead. What can you tell us? I, I just witnessed a plane that appeared to be... Division 1104. That's confirmed. Uh, we have fire on several floors, the upper floors of the World Trade Center. Uh, I don't know which tower it is, but it hit directly in the middle of uh, one of the World Trade Center towers. Sean, what kind of plane? Was it a small plane? A, a... We want to tell you what we know as we know it. We just got a report in that there's been some sort of explosion at the World Trade Center in New York City. Anybody know what that smoke is in Lower Manhattan? I'm sorry, say again? A lot of smoke in Lower Manhattan. The live pictures here, we have no further details than that. We don't know anything about what they have concluded happened there this morning. But we're going to find out and, of course, make sure that everybody knows on the air. These are, of course, the two twin trade center buildings that are down at the foot of Manhattan, that they really are the beacons of New York. It was there that there was the explosion a couple of years ago uh, brought about by terrorists. We've, that's all gone through the courts. But this, we don't know anything about, we don't know about anything that has happened here other than the fact that there's obviously been a major incident there. And we're going to go to a special report now from ABC News. This. United 175, do you read New York? Elder 1489, do you read New York? Elder 1489, go ahead. Okay, just wanted to make sure you read New York. United, United 175, do you read New York? It's 8.52 here in New York. I'm Bryant Gumbel. We understand that there has been a plane crash on the uh, southern tip of Manhattan. You're looking at the uh, World Trade Center. We understand that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. We don't know anything more than that. We don't know if it was a commercial aircraft. We don't know if it was a private aircraft. We have no idea how many were on board or what is the, what the extent of the injuries are right now. We are uh, we have I understand an eyewitness on the phone right now, sir. Sir, good morning. This is Bryant Gumble. Could you tell it? Could you give us your name? Yeah, my name is Stuart. Stuart, where are you right now? I'm working at a restaurant in Soho. All right. So tell us what you saw, if you would. I literally, I was waiting at a table and I literally saw a, it seemed to be like a small plane. I just heard a couple noises. It looked like it like bounced off the building and then I heard a, I just saw a huge like ball of fire on top and then the smoke seemed to simmer down and it just stung, um, you know, a lot of smoke was coming out and that's pretty much the extent of what I saw. A private aircraft. It, I as Matt just mentioned, we have a breaking news story to tell you about. Apparently, a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York City. It happened just a few moments ago, apparently. We have very little information available at this point in time. But on the phone, we do have Jennifer Oberstein, who apparently witnessed this event. Jennifer, can you hear me? Hello? Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Katie. Hi. Can you please tell me what you saw and give me any information about what's going on there? Yes. I have to tell you, um, it's, it's quite terrifying. I'm in shock right now. I came out of the subway at Bowling Green. I was heading to work in Battery Park at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, and I come out, and it, I saw a big, I heard a boom, looked up, and there was a big ball of fire. I'm now looking north at the World Trade Center, and it is the left twin tower if I'm looking north. I'm in Battery Park right now, and you can hear the fire engine. Delta 2315, Delta 2315, turn left immediately to a heading of 200. Well, turn immediately, 200, don't point to Roger, traffic, 1 o'clock, 10 miles, turning into your face, descending out of 31. It's a hijacked aircraft. We don't know what he's doing. Fire like this in the air, and the pieces of the building were flying down. It looks like it's the, it's like... The massive gaping hole with tons of black smoke going out, falling out of the building. Owen, we, yeah. we, we have a satellite picture a right, right now. There. That is, that is it. Oh, a live it, picture. As you can see, you Amy, this is different. This is a different perspective than we saw earlier. The plane obviously went in on one side and came out the other. There's debris all over the Early's ground broke down through below. On part. Yeah, exactly. And as you can see, uh, it affects perhaps 10 floors yes. 
of the uh, World Trade Center building. It is uh, over 100 stories tall. It is the tallest structure in New York City. It is near the flight path for uh, Newark. Right. And many times, whenever people for Newark, Canada... Delta 2315, the traffic is now at your... Well, if you're heading on the 200 heading, he's about your 2 o'clock and about 7, uh, looks like 30.6 descending. Uh, we have him in sight, sir. Delta 2315, roger. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's in sight. Okay, you can maneuver as necessary to avoid that aircraft, sir. I do not know what he's doing. From this angle, it seems like more than three floors, and perhaps what's oh, most yeah. disturbing, Edie, I think is the time of day. This this time of morning is when people it's pour into that building, and yeah. it, it, it's usually next to full. Well, you got to also remember, this is uh, near the financial district uh, on the tip of Manhattan. There are so many people at this hour who are in that neighborhood. And uh, aside from the people who are in the building, remember, this is a huge structure, 10.5 million square feet, the World Trade Center's uh, take up. And as you can see, for perspective, there goes a helicopter right by it. And uh, it, it obviously impacted one side and uh, wound up uh, affecting perhaps the other side. We do know there is debris all over the floor, down uh, the, the pavement down below, as, uh, and crews are, uh, they've got uh, all the police and the fire department and the emergency technicians are headed to that area. This is horrible. And also, when you think about what happened to the World Trade Center before, uh, the, with the bombing there and the chaos that surrounded it, this is a much different challenge, right. just as grave. And, and also, uh, from one of our perspectives, we can see that not only uh, are there gaping holes, but uh, debris continues to fall down below at this hour. We, we see, actually, uh, we see two faces. I know you can't see the picture that our audience is seeing, but we see two faces of that tower. One seems to have a rather gaping large hole in it. Uh, the other face seems to have two holes in it. Uh, it's all somewhat obscured by smoke, one large, one, one somewhat smaller. Right. And, of course, we know there are a variety of offices there. There are financial offices there. There are advertising offices, all kinds. We can only hope that since it is still a little bit early in New York, that maybe, that maybe on some of those floors, some of the offices were still not open for business. You can now see there on that one side, if, well, you can see flames now coming actually out of two sides uh, of the building. <laughs> Division 1, be advised, uh, Battalion 2, advised, you have jumpers from the World Trade Center, okay? On, on both sides of the tower. As we've heard uh, before, we said earlier that there was at least one speculative report that an airplane had crashed in, whether deliberately or accidentally, we don't know, and they are continuing reports from people who say that, that they saw an airplane, one woman saying that she saw a jet going in. So again, Don, a jet screaming that low could be consistent with what you heard? Absolutely. It, it could be consistent with what I heard. What I know I, I, I did not hear was an airplane, any kind of a prop plane. And I think looking at the damage, I don't think there's any way possible that it would have been a prop, mm. prop plane. It's just too much damage to the building. Mm. It, it, what's deceptive about the World Trade Center is that it is so huge and so tall. I would have to speculate that it would have to be a larger than normal jet. I mean, a larger than like a, a citation or something like that. It's just such a gigantic hole, and it blew out the other side. And again, these are these buildings are almost a city block size building. So for it to have blown in this hole on the on the north side, as well as the west side, it had to be a, a gigantic explosion. Well, obviously, we don't know if this was if if it was a plane, and I and underline if it was. We don't know if it would have been deliberate or accidental. We know so little now, other than what we can see from these pictures. But the interesting point is there are a number of small airports around New York uh, where uh, passenger uh, uh, corporate jets or private jets uh, will land and take off. And it's not uncommon if you have ever visited the World Trade Center.
Hey, Joe, on. you see 3321 code just southwest of Newark by about 15, 18, 20 miles. 15,000 descending. We're looking, hold on, southwest of Newark by about 15, 20. Okay, hey, we're tracking him, made a hard left turn. He's descending pretty rapidly, and especially what just happened in there. Mm. I got somebody who keeps coasting, but it looks like he's going into one of the small air points down there. No, this Sounds guy's a big boy. Some winds in some directions, even out of the big commercial airports, planes are routed quite close to New York. I've flown in from LaGuardia, even into LaGuardia, but having to go right by the World Trade Centers. But we emphasize this is all speculative at this point. And just to reset for all of you, this is a special report from ABC News. And we are dealing, and we have to underline this, we are dealing purely in the realm of speculation here as to what may have happened at the World Trade Center. Obviously, a major... Check with you now, Do you know if anyone down there has done any coordination to scramble uh, fighter type airplanes? Do you still think the airplanes in there? No, we have several situations going on here. It's uh, escalating big, big time. And we need to get the military involved with us. Wow, what's going on? Just get me somebody who has the authority to get military in the air now. All right. I'll go tell them. So that's one more witness weighing in, or at least one more source weighing in on the fact that it was an aircraft of some kind. And as Don Daler reported, this occurred about 15 or 20 minutes ago in downtown New York, uh, in New York time. Followed by an enormous crash um, and an immediate explosion. Um, I don't think we could feel shockwaves, but we, we sort of felt like we did. And we were in a position where we could see um, the Trade Center almost immediately between the other buildings. Um, and an enormous fireball that must have been 300 feet across was visible immediately. Um, a secondary explosion, I think, and then plumes of smoke. There must, be, there must have been a three-block cloud of, of white smoke. Now, from where I was on the street a moment ago, you can, in fact, see smoke leaving the building on three sides. It seems to be coming out on at least four or five floors. Um, the air is filled with hundreds of thousands of pieces of paper that are just sort of floating like confetti. Um, the area is swarming. Hey, can you look out your window right now? Yeah. Can you, can you see God about 4,000 feet about five east of your pole right now? Looks like he's... Yeah, I see him. Do you see God? Look, is he descending for the building also? He's descending really quick too, yeah. Well, that's like 2,500 feet now. He just dropped 800 feet in like, a, like one, one sweep. That's, that's another situation. You say that emergency vehicles are there, understandably so, but of course the major concern is human oh loss. I mean, do you know if there were many people in the building? Oh, the another time? one just hit. Something else just hit. A very large plane just oh. flew directly over my building. You have a second plane into the other tower? Another one just hit the building. Wow. Oh wow, another one just hit it hard. Another one just hit the world side. We just saw a plane circling the building a second ago on the shot right before I that. I think there may have been another impact. Can you tell? I just heard another very loud bang and a very large plane that might have been a DC-9 or a 747 just flew past my window. And I the second one just hit the Trade Center. Okay. Yeah, we got to get to, we got to alert the military uh, uh, real quick on this. Uh. It, it, it has now impacted the building. I'm yeah. trying to see if it's the different tower. Yeah. I it think is. it it's may have been. I believe the first one was World Trade Center 1, and it looks from what I'm seeing on the television like it may have been We're the second see, building. This is hit. a piece of tape, and we may actually see another plane enter the picture here in a second. I wonder if there are air traffic control problems. Let's Elsewhere. This happened, Jennifer? Matt, I, yeah. I'm, I've never seen any. It looks like a movie. I saw a large plane, like a jet, go immediately headed directly into the World Trade Center. It, it, it just flew into it, into the, into the other tower coming from south to north. I watched the plane fly into the World Trade Center. It was a jet. It was a very large plane. It was going fast. It went past the Ritz Carlton Hotel that's being built in Battery Park. It went, flew right past it, almost hit it, and then went in. This is so shocking, of course, to everybody watching. I, I've never seen anything like it. It literally flew itself into World Trade Center. Obviously, now we, we move from what, what appears to have... There it is right there. Again, I'm looking from south to north, that, and it went into the, the one on the right. That appeared to be at least a 727. We saw it a second ago. Here, it, here comes the videotape that we, we just showed you. You will see... What appears to be a large plane. It could be a 727 right there. Maybe. It looks like the uh, World Trade Center is on fire. Yes, it's a Boeing 757. We think just flew into the air, into the building. Are you, you're not kidding, right? No, I'm not kidding. Oh, shit. 
Yes. What's happened here? We're going to immediately check with air traffic control in the area to find out if they had contact with either of these planes before the accident, but what we've just seen is, is about the most shocking videotape I've ever seen. What are the odds of two separate okay. planes hitting both towers? Elliot, are you still there? Hello? Elliot? Yes, I'm still here, Katie. So, Elliot, what can you see right now from, from your perspective? Um, I don't face in that direction. I can't see anything personally. It is completely impossible to understand why this is happening and to figure out what, the, what in the world is going on. I think we have to be grateful Ali that the first plane hit before 9 a.m., but it's now after 9 a.m., and I just wonder how many people were in those, those offices. Fill up. Well, hopefully that they were evacuated following the first incident, and we can only hope that there was a very short period of time from when we first learned about this was probably about 8.50 Eastern time. This second incident occurred about 9.05, and so obviously that would be a short amount of time to get people out of the building. Mm -hmm. Ali Eberhardt is another witness who is on the ground. Ali, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Can, please tell me what you're seeing. Well, um, I live in lower Manhattan. I face the north tower, the north side, where the first plane crashed into the building, and right now there's a lot of chaos on the ground, a lot of emergency vehicles. Everyone from the World Financial Center has exited and is walking north up to Battery Park North. There's just mass and mass of people uh, walking uh, north uptown of Manhattan. Uh, I was happened to look on the first tower, and I actually saw people waving where the first plane crashed through, and then it was unbelievable seeing this second jet come crashing into the second tower. It's, what is going on? And unfortunately, here in New York, many of our stations cannot see this, local stations, because the antennas are on the World Trade Center. They're backup towers on the Empire State Building. But uh, communication, television communication in New York City is probably... And that was the first plane. Chat. That that. Did you... Did you see... Here's here, where, where uh, Mr. Uh, Davis, we're looking at a... Um, at a tape replay yeah. of the second plane boring into the building. Um, hard for us to tell exactly how large an aircraft w it is there or whether or not that was intentional. Um, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Believe me, it's, a, it's, it's intentional. We saw the second one come up to Hudson and veer into the second building. Why do you say the second was intentional? Uh, because it was flown very deliberately there appeared to be nothing wrong with the aircraft it was flown very deliberately into the building have they um have, have you don't obviously you're at 50th you don't have any vantage point down there what what's everybody else talking about there who has the same vantage point they see all the same thing you did uh yes well i said uh, others did not see the first one but there were several people in my office when the second one came in yeah we're looking at the second one boring in right now and it does not seem to be wavering in any way or seem to be banking to avoid uh, the tower in any uh, way. Okay, this is, uh, uh, who's up there? Langley. Okay, you're listening? Well, I told the SD so far, we need to get those fighters straight over Manhattan because we don't know how many guys are out of bar. Could be three, two, could be more. I don't know, just in case. Not down in Whiskey 105 where they want, FAA wants to hold. We need to be more tech. Yes, mm. it is. And stick them, you, me to you know, me friggin Everybody, I think, immediately assumed that a bomb had exploded and, and that sort of, uh, pre, you know, had people thinking that further bombs may explode. So there was sort of a rush away. Did you see, George, the second plane, that jet? You know, Fly into the, any, the other twin I tower? I heard two explosions, however. There was a first explosion that was louder and then a second explosion. And, um, but but I, did not, I could not see that. And I looked up, and when I looked up, I saw debris falling. L2431, uh, we have a message for you to heighten your cockpit security uh, due to uh, some activity this morning. Oh, hey, guys. And that is from uh, company? Negative. Uh, it's a general advisory to all aircraft. Uh, this morning, an aircraft hit the World Trade Center and been hijacked. And we're receiving reports that there may have been a second one. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, was it a domestic carrier that was uh, hijacked? Uh, it was an American Airlines aircraft. 
Okay, thank you. That there were in an area here where there are three major airports. You have Newark Airport, Kennedy Airport, and LaGuardia Airport, all within several miles of the World Trade Center. You know, it's very unusual for a plane to get into this area without being completely tracked or identified by air traffic control. So you would have to imagine that, A, if this plane were headed right for the World Trade Center, there must have been someone trying to talk or communicate with that pilot. and and for it to fly right into the side of the building. Well, the, the, the smaller plane you can understand almost, but a jumbo jet, a large jet, completely... Let's re-rack that video if we could down in the control room where we actually saw the jet flying into the building, and which was And I was, was mistaken. And Elliot Walker said it was a big plane. I was looking in the distance and saw yeah. a small plane, which might have been a helicopter, actually, yeah. to see this plane come into the picture. There it is. That is a big plane. And... I mean, it's hard to imagine. Edge of Monroe, inform every unit coming to this scene, responding on West Street or Liberty Street, not to pull up in front of the building. We have ambulances and everybody else pulling up, and we got debris falling from the building. They have to stop short of the building, either north or south. Okay. The World Trade Center. I'm wondering if Jennifer Oberstein is still on the phone. Um, do we still have Jennifer on the phone? She's actually not on the phone because she was near a police officer. At mm -hmm. least we could have perhaps gotten more information from that officer. Yeah. Uh, needless to say, it's pandemonium, yeah. I am sure, down there. And we gathered that from even the eyewitnesses with whom we spoke and how terrifying this was for them to see. And you can only imagine as you get closer to the Twin Towers, a, a New York landmark, mm -hmm. yeah. landmark um, how, the, what the scene must be like there. You know, you talked about the buildings looking like they're buckled. They're designed to, to have a two degree sway in either direction. American dispatch, Jim McDonald. Indianapolis Center, did you get a hold of American 77 by chance? No, sir, but we have an unconfirmed report that the second airplane hit the World Trade Center. And it's Say again? You know, we lost American 11 through hijacking. You know, American was a uh, uh, Boston, Los Angeles flight. It was, all right, I can't really, I can't hear what you're saying there. You said American 11? Yes, we were hijacked, which is a Boston L.A. flight, and 77 is a Dulles L.A. flight, and uh, we have an unconfirmed report, a second airplane just flew into the World Trade Center. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Why do you say deliberately fly into the Trade Center? Uh, because um, there was no doubt in my mind that, both planes were using the Trade Center as a target. They weren't in trouble. They weren't in distress. They weren't falling from the sky. They aimed for it. And they did a very good job. The Trade Center is torn open. There's a hole in the south side of the Trade Center, torn open from the impact of the plane, which fell into the street below. Would that, would that be the, the, the westernmost of the two towers? Um, the southernmost of the two towers. Southernmost of the two towers. Yes. Yes, it's a big gaping hole in it. Flames and smoke have been pouring out since it happened about five minutes ago. I'm a little shaken because I saw the plane pass before my eyes. It was uh, just about at my eye level. So How I mean, close to you? A block and a half. Um, you say you saw the first plane fall down. Yes. Um, we're we're re-racking tape here, by the way, and, and for, uh, I'm, I'm speaking to you, Mr. Schne Mr. Schneider, but I'm, I'm showing tape right here of the second plane boring into the, um, the northernmost of the two towers. You say you saw the first plane fall down. What can you tell me about that plane? Well, I didn't recognize it as a plane at first. It looked to me like a charred piece of metal, and I... I had thought that there was an explosion from within the Trade Center, so I thought what I was seeing was a piece of the Trade Center falling, because the sheath of the Trade Center is metal. But um, since I've learned that the first explosion was caused by a plane crashing into the tower, I've assumed that what I saw was a piece of fuselage that was falling, and the plume of flame I saw shoot out would be consistent with jet fuel exploding. So you, have, so you really have, have no idea of how large a plane the first one was? No, I didn't even know that was a plane. I learned that from the news media. But I definitely saw the second plane. I heard its sound, and I saw it streaming in from the south. I watched it crash into the Trade Center. Um, you said you're very afraid, and understandably so. Um, they're not evacuating your building? Um, no. I ha I'm going to leave on my own, but I haven't heard any uh, decisions made to that effect. Can you see the ground from your vantage point? Oh, yes. Talk to me about the scene on the ground, if you would. Well, it's completely devoid of vehicles and people. 
the entire street is totally littered with paper and smoke, and several vehicles are on fire uh, on Liberty Street in the parking lot where either fuel or pieces of the plane fell onto them after crashing into the Trade Center. But There's a tremendous number of emergency vehicles here and continuing to arrive. I hear sirens from every side. All right, Mr. Schneider, you've got a great vantage point. I'm going to ask you to hold on for, with me for a little while, if you would. I know okay, you, Mr. Gunn. I know you're anxious to get out of the building. I'm not going to keep you forever, I promise. Okay. Um, but let me ask you to sit tight for a second while I go to Washington, where Jim Stewart is, um, is standing by. Um, he's got some official reaction. Jim, good morning. What are you hearing? Morning, Brian. Well, as uh, by happenstance, I was talking to FBI headquarters at the moment this explosion took place. They saw it occur as we saw it occur, the second explosion, rather, and their reaction was the same as everyone else. Number one, uh, they noticed the clear weather there. Number two, they noticed what appeared to be, in their eyes, a deliberate attempt to crash the aircraft into the uh, World Trade Center. Uh, right now, they are trying to determine whether, in fact, it was deliberate. They have no information they can share at the moment, and I get the sense that they're in the same mode that we are, simply uh, yeah. their Jim, mouth is or Jim, gate Jim, trying not, to figure out what's going on. Jim, let me interrupt for just one second. I'm sure. looking at a report that the FBI is investigating reports of a plane hijacking. Did you have any news of that? No, we don't. By airline. Are you able to confirm anything within your airline to us? No, uh, unfortunately. Uh, how, how about can you tell me if we know for sure it was American 11 that went into the trade center? We think that's who it was. Okay. And we're missing another flight also. Uh, what flight are you missing? 77. And, and when was the last time you knew for sure something about him? Uh, he was in, um, wait a minute. Well, there's a, I don't know how he got up there, but there's they think 77 is, is up there also. Okay, but, he's, he's out of Dulles. I, uh, okay, and? Dulles, L.A., and they both uh, apparently have been hijacked in 11, and we're pretty sure is in, the, in there, and, and uh, 77, we were talking to them, uh, according to Indianapolis Center, about uh -huh. 45 minutes ago, uh -huh. and uh, in Indy Center, uh -huh. and I don't know how he got to, to uh, back to the Trade Center. I have no idea if, if, if that happened. Okay, it may not have. We have another call sign. Of course, we don't know for sure any of these call signs right now. But uh, video uh, on on Fox and other television networks uh, all uh, sense that this may well be a, a terrorist uh, incident of some kind and something that will uh, certainly uh, uh, draw the president's involvement. We've got a, a report from the FBI that uh, a 737 was hijacked uh, very shortly before the uh, the second plane uh, uh, flew into the uh, the other uh, World uh, Trade Center tower. And uh, as you can aware, the president uh, uh, who travels with uh, secure communication uh, to his national security staff uh, is being briefed of, uh, about this uh, even as we speak. John? There, certainly at the foot of the building, fairly early in the morning to be able to go and see it. The two collisions, the two incidents have occurred about two-thirds of the way up. Um, John Miller, we haven't, <coughs> excuse me, we haven't had a aircraft fly into a building in New York as far as I know since just after the Second World War when the Empire State Building when it flew into the Empire State Building that's right a, a B-52 flew into the Empire State Building uh, then and uh, this is uh, was really the first time there's been anything like that since John I was listening as you and, and uh, Chris Isham the head of our investigative unit wandered up here to the rim just a short while ago to saying one of you I think this was something they've been waiting to happen who are you talking about what are you talking about what we were talking about is uh, there's been a great uh, frustration since the bombing of the World Trade Center, which the suspects later told federal authorities w were intended to take the building down, that it didn't have a larger effect. And U.S. intelligence, FBI uh, people for years have heard that they've always wanted to try and finish that job off um, to take the buildings out and uh, that it was another viable target. Interestingly, ironically, whatever you want to call it, the World Trade Center just hired, two weeks ago, the head of the FBI's National Security Division. Hello, Command Center. Yes, sir. This is John Thomas, Ops Manager. I think we need to let everybody know this right away if they don't already. American 77 was over, uh, was just west of Charleston, West Virginia, at flightable 350. It's a heavy, heavy Boeing 752 and disappeared off our radar scope about 1256Z along with lost uh, frequency. 
We were treating it as the law started to do some procedures to notify search and rescue and whatnot when uh, American Airlines told us they've had some aircraft or an aircraft hijacked. We now believe that aircraft may have been hijacked, although no one has, you know, we have nothing to verify that. But with the World Trade Center, we could have another loose aircraft out there somewhere. Security correspondent is with us in Washington. John, what do you know? Peter, we do hear that uh, there was a hijacking. It is not clear where that hijacking occurred at this point, uh, but it is one of the many things that U.S. officials are scrambling to try to get a handle on at this point. Anything else, John? What happens at the Pentagon at a moment like this? I know everybody springs into action, but what do they do? What happens is uh, there is a particular counterterrorism cell uh, within the Joint Chiefs of Staff that goes into an emergency uh, basis at this point. They're investigating all aspects of uh, air traffic in the area, uh, all intelligence that as they sift through it, uh, may have given them some indication that something was happening. At this point, though, there were no warnings. They Military Boston Center just had a report that American 11 is still in the air and it's on its way towards, heading towards Washington. Okay, American 11 is still in the air yes, on its way towards Washington? Was another, it was definitely another aircraft that hit the tower. That's the latest report we have. Okay. I'm going to try to confirm an ID for you, but I would assume he's somewhere over uh, either New Jersey or somewhere further south. Okay, so... American 11 isn't a hijack at all then, right? No, he is a hijack. He, American 11 is a hijack. Yes. And this he's going into third, Washington? This could be a third aircraft. Much of the country watching television this morning will have seen the second plane uh, crash into the other tower. And we have, as you can see from a distance there, until we get our cameras on the ground, uh, producing material which we can put on the air. No. Okay, uh, American Airlines is still airborne. 11, the first guy, he's heading towards Washington. Okay, I think we need to scramble Langley right now, and I'm going I'm to take the fighters from Otis and try to chase this guy down if I can find him. Scene. They put out an urgent call for Scott Air Packs uh, because they're climbing smoke-filled stairwells. They've got to go very high up to get to the target locations, and they're talking about people trapped in the smoke there. And this, of course, is reminiscent of, of, of 1993 when the explosions occurred at the Trade Towers last time. Exactly. John, is it standard operating procedure? You mentioned that all of the other principal government buildings in the city, Gracie Mansion, the mayor's official residence, and some of the other buildings will be evacuated. Is that a fairly standard, anticipated operation? It is an existing plan um, that is on paper, but Peter, I have to say, uh, it's never been put into effect in New York. This is unprecedented, and I think um, as this develops, you'll see similar plans go into effect in Washington and potential target buildings, because mm -hmm. they really have to take the position that they're under some form of attack here, at least as a precaution, until they sort this out. As we wait to get a better grasp of, of what now becomes a rescue operation of the people in the Twin Tread Towers, we're reminded here that the U.S. officials, according to Pentagon sources, have no warnings uh, today of any kind of terrorist attack. And if you listen to the news on a regular basis, you hear the Pentagon warning Americans worldwide of some impending terrorist attack. And here we are in the height of commercial <coughs> America. Um, with, uh, with no warning whatsoever, no intelligence whatsoever, as far as we can tell, at least in these first couple of hours. No, and all of the latest intelligence, um, at least the basics of which I've been scanning for months, um, have focused on the high potential for attacks against American targets abroad. Indeed, uh, federal authorities and the intelligence community re have reported they've, they've interdicted and interrupted um, more than a dozen of those attacks by shutting terrorist cells down around the world. They've always been worried since the first attack on the World Trade Center that there would be another bold strike on U.S. soil. Mm. Least from their desks, ran downstairs, and now there's a steady stream of folks running away from the building. Some people saying that they're fearing there'll be another explosion, and when they saw the second plane, convinced that this was dangerous, there's, there's just an absolute flood of folks escaping downtown Manhattan right now. And Rose, do you have anybody with you that could um, talk about being inside the World Trade Center when this happened? Right now, honestly, there are scores of people that are literally running a bomb. Super with dispatch, urgent, people trapped, five World Trade on the 80 floor. Three World Trade, that's the 101 floor and the 102 floor. Manhattan received. 
figured out that there's ongoing danger and there's just a stream of folks running as quickly as they can uptown away from the from this. Understandably, what about rescue efforts? I would imagine there's still a number of people inside those buildings. Well, right now what you see is there's there's uh, trucks trying to get through and, and people have actually jumped from the crowd and are trying to help direct traffic to try to get emergency vehicles there. There's no traffic going in the other direction, but because of the flow of people, it looks like some emergency vehicles are actually having trouble getting to mm. the scene. And from where you're standing, is there any kind of command center, any place that people are being directed toward? Right now, what there is is there's a crush of, of emergency vehicles and rescue vehicles, but they don't seem to be quite organized in any direction. Um, there's fire department vehicles on the one side where you see the smoke coming out of the building. On the other hand, you see police groups of police officers trying to organize the crowd in a more orderly fashion. I think there's, there seems to be some fear on their part that such a huge crowd of people might injure each other on the way, on the way out. All right, Rose Arce on the ground there near the World Trade Center. We continue our coverage live with the live pictures as we go. And we're just now getting word again from the Associated Press now saying that the crash of these two aircraft into the towers of the World Trade Center in New York appear to be an act of terrorism. This they are quoting a U.S. official. They did not say which department of this, uh, or this U.S. official was speaking from or the authority this, department, this official was actually carrying at this particular point. But they're saying that a U.S. official is now saying to the the Associated Press, and his official, well, he is saying at least that these two aircraft crashes we've seen into each of the towers of the World Trade Center are the act of terrorism. We're just getting word now that President Bush is going to be coming out and he's going to have comments uh, momentarily. We understand we're keeping an eye on the picture from Sarasota. He's going to be returning to Washington almost immediately, we understand. Darren? And in fact, as you mentioned, President Bush is in Florida today. We're supposed to have an education event just minutes from now. That has been canceled. Our Major Garrett is traveling with the President. Major, maybe you can tell us a little bit more on the president's immediate plans. Good morning, Darren. Uh, President Bush, uh, as you said, will make a statement here at Emma E. Booker Elementary School in Sarasota on the catastrophe at the Twin Towers in New York. Following that statement, the president will board Air Force One and return immediately to Washington. Were the scenes of a bombing in 1993. The FBI told the Associated Press that it was, quote, foul play and not an accident. A person who answered the phone, that was reported by ABC, a person who answered the phone on the trading floor at interdealer broker Cantor Fitzgerald, located near the top of the World Trade Center, said, we're blanking dying when asked what was happening and hung up. There was screaming and yelling in the background and a follow-up call was not answered. Nick Fulton, an eyewitness, said just before the first explosion, he saw a plane fly over his apartment in the Soho district of Lower Manhattan. Jamie Agangel is on the telephone, our national correspondent, with more information. Jamie, what can you tell us? Katie, I've just spoken to top U.S. officials with the access to latest intelligence, and they said, quote, that this was clearly terrorist-related, no question about it. They said that they couldn't give any further details now, not because they didn't want to share it, but because they just don't. United 93, that traffic three is 1 o'clock, 12 miles eastbound 370. Negative contact, we're looking at United 93. Somebody call Cleveland. Roger, back in the 1060 with you, we're 370, we're uh, slowing uh, due to the delays possible going, going eastbound. That's American 1060. <laughs> You got United 93? United 93. Stop the shard now. Yeah. Descended. What's okay. that? I just saying it looked like he descended there. I don't there. think so. United 93, verify 350. United 93, Cleveland. Go ahead, Craig. Do you have United 93 south the shard? We hear some funny noises. We're trying to get him. Do you okay. have him? No. Thank you. United 93, Cleveland. United 1523, did you hear your company? Uh, did you hear uh, some interference on the frequency here uh, a couple of minutes ago, screaming? Yes, I did, 797, and uh, I, we couldn't tell what it was either. Okay. United 93, Cleveland, if you hear the center right then. Or the second plane hit the building, you'll watch it enter from the right portion of the screen mm -hmm. and then make contact. By the order of the citywide tour commander, all off-duty firefighters and all off-duty officers are hereby recalled, repeating, by the orders of the citywide tour commander, all off-duty firefighters and all off-duty officers we're here by order for recall immediately. That one occurred shortly after 9 o'clock in the morning. 
how many people were in the building at the yeah. time of the impact. And, and it, it's a large plane. We're told it was either a 737. Mm -hmm. Some reports that the first plane was a 757. Some kind of Airbus. That was what the United Worker told us. That apparently that had been that it was an American Airlines plane that had been hijacked. Hijacked from Boston to Los Angeles, but we're just getting initial reports of that. And again, we must tell you that we're trying to get as much information, but it is trickling in at a very slow pace. John is the, here's the president now in, in Florida. I wonder if everybody knows there what's going on. We'll listen to him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a difficult moment for America. I. Um, Unfortunately, we'll be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary of Rod Pace and Lieutenant Governor will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the vice president, to the governor of New York, to the director of the FBI, and I've ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now, if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. President clearly shaken, I think one can say, um, confirming what we think we all knew, which was the two aircraft um, in an act of terrorism. Uh, crashed into the twin trade towners. Nobody was quite certain about the first one uh, at the very outset, but the president absolutely, having talked to the vice president, the governor of New York, the director of the FBI, uh, now believing and confirming that we have two terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center. And the president said... What is going on here? I got the piece to down. And keep remaining sitting. We have a ball board. So it's... Uh, uh, calling Cleveland Center, you're unreadable. Say again slowly. God bless the victims and their families. John Miller, what are you picking up on the police radio? Um, we'll there, was a, there was a bit of a stir a moment ago because LaGuardia Tower reported urgently that there was another aircraft moving fast in the no-fly zone. Now they've contacted that aircraft and they say it's a military aircraft that's rushed to the scene to uh, enforce the no-fly zone and literally be a presence in the area in case there is another plane headed for the building so that there'll be some uh, at least armed aircraft up to confront it. Lines plane that was hijacked en route from Boston to Los Angeles this morning. And they're saying that there is a strong possibility that that first plane that crashed into one of the towers, which does appear to be commercial and looking at the video, they're saying it appears to be either a 737 or 757, that that apparently might have been the hijacked plane. In terms of what the second plane is, they said that that does appear, as you've been reporting, John, to be a jet plane, probably a 737, a twin engine jet airplane. Um, and those are the two things that are being looked at. They said at this point, there was no direct threat that they were aware of, of any specific threat in terms of targeting the Twin Towers there in New York, but that they did have specific threats against Americans and American facilities around the world, and that's why they issued that worldwide caution. We also know that the FBI rapid response team has been deployed. It is en route. Several FBI agents are already on the scene there at the Twin Towers, but they are definitely looking at this as a terrorist-related act, looking uh, at this point not knowing who is behind it, but looking at the strong possibility that it may be Osama bin Laden, the mastermind behind the uh, East African embassy bombings uh, several years ago. Back to you, John. All right, Rita Cosby, thanks very much. I want to bring into the conversation William Daly. Uh, Bill, I know that Osama bin Laden likes airplanes, and again, um, we are not attributing this act to his organization, but he was implicated in a plot 
to blow up something like 13 airliners in 13 days or eight in eight mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. but that back in the Philippines back in the 1980s, I believe. Exactly. Um, it has it, airplanes have been uh, his terrorist weapon of choice in the past. They have because they, they hold for, for someone like a bin Laden or other, other terrorists. Uh, the fact that you could take a plane and with an, just the number of people on the, on the plane commit such a horrendous act at one time makes an impact to the world. Uh, combine that with, an, with what we see in front of our eyes today at the World Trade Center and you, you certainly conjure up the worst possible scenario that a, uh, certainly law enforcement could think of what a terrorist might do. Um, the, before we get on to, you know, possibly bin Laden, there are certainly other, other terrorist groups around the world that uh, would like to do things like this. The question would be who might be able to actually carry out such an incident, whether uh, by sheer manpower, training, uh, or, or some other device. So um, although he's certainly our poster boy for, uh, literally, for, for terrorism worldwide, uh, there are other groups out there that certainly have also ill intent against the United States. Um, but what we see before us today is, uh, as I mentioned before, is something that uh, in, in planning scenarios gets, gets almost into the catastrophic where it's uh, to, to prevent something like this from happening. Planes fly by, John, as you may know and I know, having traveled in and out of the city, come up and down the East River by the, by the hundreds each day, by the thousands each week, and passing by the Trade Center. At, at rooftop level. To look down and you see the antenna, you see the windows. So this is something that uh, even on a bad day, uh, they fly up and down that route. Today was a perfectly clear day in New York. Or experience. Manson. Our question here is our, our aircraft that we have has climbed, turned, and is not talking to us. So do we want to scramble? We got a couple of local military here. Okay, that's a decision that has to be made at a different level. Or is someone talking about it at least? What's the call sign again? It's United 93. He's, He's right, right over Cleveland. Over Cleveland now? Yeah. Okay, we'll call you right back. You're talking about one of the tallest structures or two of the tallest structures in the United States. And uh, whether or not the elevators are working, they're probably not. They don't be, they're not used in case of fire. You've got a massive evacuation problem on your hands. Would it be, would it be highly unusual, uh, Mr. Kalstrom, for these attacks, if that's what they were, to have taken place without some degree of, of advance warning? Well, I don't know uh, the answer to that. Obviously, the FBI and law enforcement, uh, the people that come to work every day and and suffer through uh, immense criticism when little things go wrong. <clears throat> These are the days that everyone hopes that they have a very formidable, highly motivated FBI and law enforcement team. And I, I suspect we do. And these are the things that they try to not have happen. These are the things they try to have the intelligence to avoid happening. Uh, international terrorism, if that is what this is, and I don't know what it is, uh, is very hard to penetrate because it's not very, uh, doesn't have a hierarchy of authority and it's cellular and it's uh, uh, a lot of different people motivated for, uh, for religious type reasons, uh, hatred reasons and you can necessarily not know a lot about what's going on in an agency if you're in at some right. level because it's so segmented. Again, again, I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting a, a report now that it was a United Airlines plane that plowed into the building. We don't know, we don't know whether that um, negates the American Airlines reported hijacking or whether or not that was a second plane. So at this point we're getting different reports. Go ahead, Mr. Kelsey. Yeah, I mean, I, my, uh, you telling me that, Brian, if that is... A Go for 06, guys. Yes, sir. That aircraft is down. He's in our 12 o'clock position. Uh, looks like it's just to the uh, north west of the airfield at this time, sir. Go for 86, thank you. Descend and maintain 2000. Okay, we're down to 2000. And uh, this is go for 06. It looks like that aircraft crashed into the Pentagon, sir. Yeah. Um, it's in just, size. Uh, you know, it's beyond belief, uh, but it's not beyond belief. I mean, we've seen this hatred. Uh, uh, find its way into the embassy bombings in Africa. We've seen this hatred uh, at, at the USS Cole. We've seen it at the World Trade Center in 93. Uh, we've seen it around the world in, in, in acts that take place almost every day. And, uh, you know, for this to then transform itself into this size of a incredible tragedy, uh, to me, although I certainly would never expect it, never ever want it to happen, is not that unbelievable. Yeah, and James Kalstrom, let me ask you to sit tight for a second if you would. Uh, here's the captain. Uh, I would like to uh, remain seated. We have uh, one more board, and we are going to take the airport, and we have our demand, so please remain quiet. Okay, it's United 93 calling.
United 93, understand, have a bomb on board. Go ahead. We know as to the identity of this aircraft, we're talking about crowded airspace uh, in New York with, with major airports uh, in the area, both in the immediate area of New York and in the surrounding cities. Uh, there should be uh, information fairly quickly that will identify uh, these particular aircraft. Uh, and indeed, we should be able to confirm fairly quickly as to the identity of the the jet, and perhaps even some last uh, um, some last second uh, broadcast that may uh, indicate yeah. uh, what what happened. Mr. Jenkins, I'm going to interrupt for just one sure. second because we're getting word that they are evacuating the White House um, down in Washington right now about the situation in New York by National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice. Then the second notification updating him with more details on the situation came from his Chief of Staff, Andrew Card, who's traveling with the President here in Sarasota. The day was supposed to talk about education reform, but the President is scrubbing all of those plans, marshalling all the resources of the federal government, talking with his aides as he can, and preparing to fly back to Washington to again, as we said, convene a National Security Council meeting. Back to you. Uh, Major, before you get away, and I I apologize if you, if I'm asking you to repeat something, I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Uh, do we know exactly where the president was when he was told? He was just arriving here in Sarasota at Emma E. Booker Elementary School. He had taken an early morning jog this morning in Sarasota, had just arrived here with a presidential motorcade. Then the spectacular, horrific pictures began appearing on television sets here at the elementary school. The president received a telephone call from Condoleezza Rice, national security advisor. Then he received an update from his chief of staff, Andrew Carr, traveling with him. Then it was made clear to the press traveling with the president he would make a statement. Shortly before that statement, he was actually sitting down with some children here at the elementary school, reading them a book. Reporters asked him if he knew about the situation of the Twin Towers. He nodded and said he would talk about it momentarily. In fact, he did. We just heard the president's statement declaring Major. this an apparent act of terrorism. Yes, Aaron. Let, let me interrupt you here. Senator Ted Kennedy is... Uh... Okay, United 93. Go ahead. It's 29 miles out of... Uh, 29 minutes out of Washington, D.C. 29 minutes out of Washington, D.C. and tracking towards it. This is the one who reversed course in Ohio. Yes, it's an apparent terrorist act. Uh, he, he offered a prayer for the families, promised to hunt down, in his words, the people responsible for this. Uh, he will now travel back to Washington, and aides are telling us now that he will immediately convene a national security meeting to see what steps are taken next. Dev, David, uh, I'm movie. sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. we're looking at live pictures of the Pentagon where there is billowing smoke. Mick, Jim Miklaszewski just reported that he heard Come. an explosion, and right now we're looking at an aerial view of the Pentagon. Mick, can you talk to us? Uh, officially, nobody knows exactly what happened. I think the picture is pretty clear. According to one U.S. Army officer who went running past me at a full trot, he said that uh, it appears that a bomb was detonated. Indianapolis Center. Uh, Indianapolis Center. Uh, reference is Delta 89. Do you know any information about that aircraft? I wanted to give you a heads up. This is another hijack aircraft. Uh -huh. Boston to Las Vegas. He's on a mode 3 of 1304. We do have contacts. And what was the number again, Delta? Delta 8-9. It's a 767. That a Palestinian group has claimed responsibility. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We're looking at a uh, live picture from Washington, and there is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. It would appear that there has been another major explosion, this one in the nation's capital. You are looking at a scene of uh, apparent blast aftermath. There is smoke in the air over the Pentagon. We don't know whether this is the result of a bomb or whether it is yet another aircraft that has targeted a um, symbol of the United States power, but there is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. Um, this is coming at 9.43 Eastern Time. And we understand that there's a bomb at a heliport being reported. Many things that I, I, would ordinarily occur here. I must also tell you, Claire, I think if you think about what's behind the, the EOB there, you're really down uh, in pretty open area. It doesn't look like a place where a building would be on fire. No, that's right, although there are a number of buildings just behind the old executive office building on G Street that could potentially be on fire, but nothing you would necessarily think of as a target. Um, 
Apparently, we're also. Claire, being let told me interrupt you for a second. We now have fire confirmed at the Pentagon. I have John McCrethy at the Pentagon. Can hear me, John? Please get in touch immediately if you can, and brief us in there. John McCrethy has actually been evacuated from the Pentagon, and parts of the Pentagon are indeed being evacuated. Um, we want to hold our breath here, it just seems to me, for a second, and and and. And, and not get into a mode that the country is under attack. But we now have two attacks on the Twin Trade Tower Center. U.S. buildings, city buildings completely evacuated in New York City. We have this mysterious black smoke at the southwest corner of the White House, which is to say there's something going on behind the old executive office building. We now have a report that fire has been confirmed at the Pentagon. ABC's John McCrethy, our Pentagon correspondent, who's been plugging in as quickly to the intelligence and counterintelligence units there this morning, has been temporarily evacuated. But that is as much as we know for sure. Which is just opposite of the Potomac River, as I just said. We're looking at the White House, uh, Mick, because we are learning, learning that there have been some evacuations from the White House. I'm assuming that everyone is being evacuated from the Pentagon? Uh, well, <laughs> nobody's given us the official word yet, uh, but uh, I think that's probably a safe bet. Uh, thank goodness that was a helicopter that just flew by. I'm just a little nervous right now when you hear aircraft go past. But uh, they have, uh, in fact, evacuated that portion of the building. Usually they have sirens that go off in the building alerting you to the fact that uh, it's time to get out. I haven't heard those yet, uh, but just judging by the pictures, uh, it's, it's clear that that part of the building uh, uh, that is not damaged, at least, has been evacuated. Like I said, in the hallway, uh, it was pandemonium. Uh -huh. People were rushing from their offices, rushing outside. And you're in your office fr at the Pentagon right now, Mick, reporting I, to us? I am in the office, but I'm at the opposite side of where this uh, crash occurred. All right, why don't you see if you can gather some more information. Please, again, be careful, Mick. And we're okay. going to go to Matt, who's going to be talking with Jamie Gangel. All right, yeah. Katie, thank you very much. I'm joined by Tom Brokaw, and we'll try and recap what's been going on all morning here on the East Coast and in Washington, D.C. in just a few moments. But we do want to go right now to NBC's or today's national National correspondent Jamie Gangel with some more information. Jamie? Matt, I just want to tell you that U.S. intelligence sources are confirming the reports that one of the planes was a hijacked flight, an American flight from Boston to Los Angeles. They are also now looking into what's going on at the Pentagon. They don't have any details, but they have now put government buildings uh, around the city of Washington on a heightened state of alert. I think part of that is happening formally, but obviously people are seeing what's going on, and some people are leaving buildings as well simply because of the concern following these latest reports from the Pentagon. All right, Jamie, thank you very much. Again, joined by Tom Brokaw, and Katie's back with us now, too. Let's try and recap. It's 947 Eastern Time. Try and recap what's going on so far this morning, and the news is terrible. Just before 9 o'clock... At 842, actually. 842, a plane crashed into the right-hand tower of the World Trade Center, somewhat about three-quarters of the way up. You can see the smoke billowing from that point of the building. And then about 18 or 20 minutes later, a second plane, a large plane, we saw it actually on tape, hit the left-hand tower of the World Trade Center about halfway up. An enormous fireball on several sides of the building. People trying to be evacuated. There's the tape of the second plane hitting right there, even as people were trying to get out of the first building. We have confirmed reports now that there was one plane hijacked American Airlines Flight 11 from Boston to Los Angeles. And that is apparently one of the planes used in this crash. Uh, Matt, uh, there's a report on uh, Dubai television uh, that, in fact, the group claiming responsibility is the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. This comes, ironically, on a day when the Israeli Foreign Minister Shimon Peres is scheduled to meet with Yasser Arafat. Of course, we've had the meeting in South Africa for the past several days in which the Palestinians were accusing the Israelis of racism. The United States vacated that meeting, but there hasn't been one one specific incident. And the Israelis uh, vacated that meeting as well. And the well. Israelis vacated it as well, but there has not been one specific incident. Uh, they're pulling Jeff away to go talk about United 93. 
Uh, do we want to think about uh, scrambling aircraft? Oh, God, I don't know. Uh, that's a decision somebody's going to have to make probably in the next 10 minutes. Uh, you know, everybody just left the room. Trade towers here in New York two deliberate attacks on those towers today, and we do not know for sure who is responsible. I'm sure has, has probably incurred some uh, debris shattering upon it. Uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous logistical, uh, I would say at this point, challenge and nightmare for uh, people who are trying to rescue, put out the fires that are being, I'm sure, fueled by the, the, the jet fuel as well as uh, the interior of the building. We now understand that the Federal Aviation Administration is shutting down all airport airline takeoffs nationwide all airliners nationwide are being are there will be no more takeoffs and i imagine uh, that the planes that are in the air right now are going to be diverted to the closest airport as soon as possible because in a situation like this the authorities don't know where the next one might come from the next rogue aircraft we have seen the world trade center both towers hit by jetliners We've seen the Pentagon apparently hit by a jetliner. Uh, authorities want to take every precaution they can, and so all aircraft takeoffs nationwide have been stopped. You've got to think that that is an indication, that that is an indication one would suspect that this was a hijacking, or at least one of them was a hijacking, because that would indicate that they don't know if there is another plane would be coming from. And one way to prevent a uh, repeat, whether it would be a fourth attack, if, the, if that's indeed what happened out of the Pentagon. Well, and uh, we are looking at like pictures of the Pentagon area now, Eric, and it, it's quite clear from the smoke cloud that uh, some enormous explosion hit there. Is the, uh, would the Pentagon be protected by uh, anti-aircraft uh, missiles such as uh, are at the White House, believed to be at the White House roof? Perhaps this plane, that if it was a plane uh, at the Pentagon, was heading toward the Pentagon, could it have been shot down by our military before it got there? Uh, because that appears to be uh, smoke uh, from jet fuel a little bit away, away uh, from the Pentagon, not on the building, actual building itself, uh, as we look at this. But let me again say the plane that I saw was heading... In, here in Manhattan, the first plane that I believe was heading south it was uh, above Fifth Avenue at a low altitude, which is very, which was rare. But it was it is a, a usual jet route from planes, especially planes that are vectored down from the north, uh, whether it be from Canada or whether it be uh, from Boston. Uh, as uh, Rita Cosby, our colleague, had reported, uh, there are sources telling her that perhaps it was a. Uh, one, one of the planes was a hijacked plane from uh, Boston. We have witnesses at the Pentagon who say that a helicopter was near uh, the Pentagon and then there was an explosion. So uh, again, uh, folks, stay with us. This is all coming into us. Uh, breaking news. You can imagine uh, the catastrophe that we're trying to deal with here. But uh, clearly three explosions, two at the World Trade Center, uh, one outside or very near the Pentagon. Molly Falconer is at one of the New York area hospitals and has some updated information on uh, the number of injuries. Molly? Hi, John. I'm coming to you live from downtown Manhattan where St. Vincent's Hospital basically looks like it is under siege. There are flares out forming a block perimeter around this hospital. I watched one victim come out of an ambulance go in on a stretcher. They look uh, exceedingly injured and right now there are hospital beds lined up on the street right outside the hospital waiting with paramedics right next to them for the waves of injuries they are obviously expecting to come in here there's a yet another one i don't know if you can hear the sirens coming in now um, new york city police officers have uh, locked this place down with wooden barricades more coming in on trucks right now I'm watching lit flares get put in the asphalt here. Um, there are hundreds of people lined up all around this hospital and lines and lines of people trying to get on pay phones and hard lines just to get out to call into the hospital or call their loved ones. Um, nothing works down here. Our cell phones are down. All we can watch now are just the sirens and the paramedics on standby. Um, the entire hospital staff... All right, we have lost Molly Falconer's connection. That would not be unusual given the fact that the World Trade Center is a hub of communications in this city. Other high profile links. Nancy Gabriel, I'm not sure. Do we know if the United Nations has been evacuated yet? Uh, the police department on the New York side has ordered the United Nations evacuated. In fact, they did that very early on, um, almost immediately after it became apparent uh, what was going on here. Uh, right now, at the World Trade Center, the emergency units are reporting there's still debris falling onto the street 
on the uh, east side of the building, including uh, a second body, which has fallen from the wreckage uh, on the upper floors. They're also talking about um, people who are on the roof, and they've asked uh, if the aviation unit uh, from the police department can get up there and uh, pick people up. But again, because of that smoke, as we discussed before, mm -hmm. they're going to have real trouble uh, edging in there. As we look at the Pentagon, again, we have to say that sometimes the camera and the eye don't see precisely what is happening. We have now had eyewitness reports from our sources in Washington say they did see a plane crash in the vicinity of the Pentagon. We're looking at it um, from the western, from the Washington end, uh, which would be to the east of the Pentagon, slightly to the northeast of the Pentagon itself. And it looks very much as if there is fire in the courtyard itself in that central quad. But you can see a small plume of smoke on the, on the northern side of the building as well. At least I think it's the north, yes, it is the northern side of the building as well. And we're not um, absolutely certain. The Associated Press, um, it, quoting a senior U.S. official, um, or quoting a U.S. official, is now saying affirmatively that one of the two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center was hijacked after takeoff from Boston at this time of day. Um, it, any number of aircraft taking off from Boston, to go ABC's John McCleffey believes um, that it was an American Airlines flight, flight number 11, bound for Los Angeles. And I realize when, when, when saying that, we're going to put the fear of God into a lot of people on the West Coast and, and people who know, who are connected with that flight. But our Pentagon correspondent, John McCrethy, just reports into us that American Airlines Flight 11, bound for Los Angeles from Boston, was actually hijacked out of Boston. That's a helicopter over the Pentagon. Um, I apologize to the audience. We have two separate monitors here. They show different pictures. Can you tell me which one the audience is seeing at home so I can work with that? And may I not have to ask again? Thanks very much. Um, I don't. And, um, and so we now have the first incident at the Trade Center and the second trade incident at the Trade Center has two aircraft. We know that one of them, at, we know at this moment that one of them, according to um, officials talking both to the Associated Press and a confirmation from ABC's John McCarthy at the Pentagon that it was a commercial aircraft, commercial aircraft, um, that was hijacked out of Boston, which could have been any time before uh, 9 o'clock this morning because the first attack on the Trade Tower was um, just before 9 o'clock and the second one was after that. And John Miller, you're listening. Um, actually, it's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, there's, no, there's no way to characterize any part of this as fortunate, but if you look at cities who are prepared to handle an incident like this, um, and as you've seen New York's emergency response to this, it is probably one of the few places that is, that is prepared with the kind of equipment, response, and rescue efforts that could actually address something like this. And Washington is probably the other. Um, immediately when this happened, the entire emergency service unit, which comprises hundreds of specially trained cops, was mobilized to the scene. Now a triage center, um, a triage center uh, for the injured has been set up just around the corner from the World Trade Center. It's um, an incredible scene down there with the... United 93 is 20 miles northwest of Johnstown. 20 miles northwest on primary? Uh, well, that's a report from another aircraft. All, asking all planes not to take off. Now the FAA has ordered all aircraft currently in the air over the United States to land at the nearest airport. Now you can imagine what may be happening or what they think might be happening in some part of the country that there is somebody else on some aircraft coming from somewhere or going somewhere <clears throat> with evil in there with evil intentions and so all aircraft currently in the air over the United States have been ordered to land at the nearest airport. I think one what other you're thing is sure. I just want to check one thing because um, one of the very first people the president talked to was the director of the FBI and Pierre Thomas, who covers the Justice Department and the FBI for us, has been here. Um, they may think they prepare for this kind of thing, Pierre, but man, it must have been a shock. 
stunning shock. Uh, the FBI Special Operations Center is now in full alert. I'm in there. Man, call Joe. like a, a new plume, a new large plume of smoke. Off the building. It may be that something has fallen. We, we don't know, to be perfectly honest. Being seen behind us of this second tower, now just encased in smoke. What is behind it, I, I cannot tell you. But just look at that. That is about as frightening a scene as you will ever see. Again. Air Pulse from Tower 1. Got to all the units. Yeah. Evacuate the building. Not out there. That's going up. Command post to all units. Fires at the Pentagon evacuated. The State Department evacuated. The one Tower 2 has had a major explosion and what appears to be a complete collapse surrounding the entire area. As a credible terrorist threat, we have two explosions, two planes hitting the World Trade Center here in New York. And what this second explosion was that took place about a part of the south, that would be the South Tower, has apparently collapsed. We don't know if that was from the impact of this first plane that hit it or whether something else has happened there. We'll work on that. What can you tell us? <laughs> David Lee Miller, can you tell us uh, what happened there? All right, David Lee Miller, who has seen his share of horrors around the world in trouble spots in the Middle East and elsewhere, is in that area uh, reporting on what we think we can see. I, I want to stress it's, it's tough to... Hello? Yeah, David Lee, what can you tell us? John, uh, the scene is horrific. One of the two towers literally collapsed. I was making my way to the foot of the... World Trade Center suddenly, while talking to an officer who was questioning me about my press credentials, we heard a very loud blast, an explosion. We looked up at the uh, building. Uh, I believe it said five injured people at the Pentagon. Uh, one eyewitness and only one so far is quoted as saying he thinks, I put that in quotation marks, he thinks a plane crashed into the Pentagon. But there'll be rumors all day. Uh, we're going to try to separate the rumors from the facts. And, now, you're looking at a live picture of the twin towers of the World Trade Center uh, in flames uh, with much smoke. Uh, in the last few minutes, there have been a... Can anybody hear me? Washington at the moment. Now, in Washington, uh, the, the report spread that a plane also crashed at the Pentagon. See, it's David Martin says there are at least several injuries. Several is the word he used. The FAA has banned all aircraft to have takeoffs nationwide. Here in New York, the city is on a full terrorist alert. Bridges and tunnels are closed. You recall the World Trade Center was the target of a terrorist bombing in 1993. Now, again, it's important to point out that the television, what we can show you is what the t is at the end of the television camera. The whole city is not in smoke and flames, not by a long shot. Uh, the city is on a terrorist alert. Uh, entry into the city has been closed off. Tunnels and bridges are closed off as a precautionary measure. But, uh, you know, in many, many areas of New York City, life goes on this morning, and the same is true in Washington, D.C. So just keep in mind that when you see this picture constantly, uh, it's of one section of New York City, and we go to Washington for the picture there, the Pentagon, uh, the same thing. 
Uh, these this is what the uh, terrorists back in 1993 tried to accomplish when they uh, drove a uh, van laden full of bombs into the garage. Uh, apparently they were successful. John? Let me bring in the former governor of New York, Mario Cuomo. He's with us by telephone now. Governor, what's your reaction? That's the only thing I can ask you. It's the same as everyone else is. Uh, everybody now is, is holding their breath and measuring the extent of the tragedy as it grows from moment to moment. And that will be the story, I'm sure, for the next uh, 24 hours is how much damage was done. I think the, the longer range story is even more terrible. The longer range story is who did it and why. And if it were a nation, it would be easy to deal with, but it's not a nation. It'll be individual Excuse terrorists. Excuse me, Governor, can you hold, hold on for just a second? From the tower, from right to left, I guess west to east, and it just, everything just all of a sudden just imploded. I ran as fast as I could, went inside of a building about a block away. I stood in the building for a couple of seconds, and then all of a sudden the building started falling out, filling up with smoke. I was with a bunch of law enforcement officers. We couldn't get out of the building because everything was locked up. And then I came out, and everything was filled with ash, and it looks like I'm, looks like I'm in a surreal movie. Do you, do you know if it was an explosion or if it was a building collapse? To me, it sounded like it, it, to me it sounded like an explosion. Then, then the building, the rolling sound sounded like the building collapsed. Were, were there other people? There must have been a lot of people on the ground nearby when it happened. Oh, mo where that happened, there was mostly law enforcement. I don't think there were many uh, civilians there. I don't know. Don't move, Pat. How many, These, how many people would you say were on the ground when the uh, when the building exploded or collapsed? Law enforcement, they were, I don't I, over on that corner there. I don't know. There might have been there might have been 100, 150. I don't know. What's your, what's your full name, officer? Police officer Gronowski. All right. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Folks, you're you're looking at live pictures on the left of your screen. On the right of your screen, the uh, tower, one of the twin towers of the World Trade Center. There's there's thick ash on the ground. Lots of it. Pandemonium here a short time ago when the building did collapse or whatever it was that happened. It was a huge explosion, a huge rumbling cloud of smoke and fire came across Church Street and then started billowing this way. And all we saw was, was people were people running in this direction. Everyone, law enforcement people, a woman pushing a baby carriage. This is actually a we believe debris from one of the planes that hit one of the towers on the World Trade Center. The FBI is here, as you can see. They had roped this area off. They were taking photographs and securing this area just prior to that huge explosion that we all heard and felt. We, uh, we'll try and talk to some of these guys. Uh, I believe I was the one talking about that Delta 1989. Go ahead. Okay, well, uh, disregard that. Uh, um, did you? What we found out is that he was not a confirmed hijack. Okay, no, no, no. I, I don't want to even worry about that right now. Uh, we got a United 93 out here. Are you aware of that? United that has a, we've got three more hijacked airborne. That has a bomb on board. A bomb on board. And this is confirmed. Do you have a mode 3, sir? No, we lost this transponder. We have a bomb um, Boston, what we want to know is, did you scramble airplanes for that Delta 1989? We did, out of Selfridge and Toledo, did sir. Did you? Did you? Are they in the air? Yes, they are. Is there any way we can get them to where this United is? Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The streets have been shut down. Uh, there was very little traffic on the streets except for emergency vehicles going one way or the other. So there was not a lot of vehicle traffic in this area, but there were a lot of pedestrians. Okay, uh, there is now on the United 93, yes. there is a report of black smoke in the, in the last position I gave you, 15 miles south of Johnstown. Uh, from the airplane or from the ground? Uh, they're speculating it's from the aircraft. Okay. Uh, who, it, it hit the ground. That's, okay. what they're, that's what they're speculating. It's speculation only. Okay. To see if we can help. No. What, what do you mean? To see if we can help. But this is... Uh... Yeah. This poor woman. Wow. Rick Leventhal is the one reporting on the, the ground. Running. He's not able to hear me at this moment. Uh, but Rick... Just the, just the sound of a plane. Star jets, star jets, star jets. All right.
What, what are you guys doing right now? What's your, what's your assignment? What, what's your assignment? Help people. Are there a lot of injured? The, uh, the, the dust is still thick in the air. With, what that guy is covered with is, is this stuff that's all over the street. Just thick, soot, ash. Just came roaring down here in a huge cloud from the World Trade Center. You see, just the, the survivors, if you will. Are you able to talk? Can we just have, talk to you about what happened? I was about seven when exploded. You were right there at the building? Yes, there's a lot of people trapped. You're right, A lot of people trapped. EMT. This guy needs help. Rick Leventhal is not able to hear me, but from his vantage point on the ground, I think it's not clear to him What's fairly clear I mean, to us, looks like here. our vantage point from the helicopter, that the top to of like Tower that. 1, One I mean, World Trade Center, has literally here. crumbled. I can't guess right? how many floors, perhaps 30, perhaps 40. This action, Matt and I, Matt actually just pointed out to me on any given day, 50,000 people, Tom, work at the World Trade Center. And, and at 8.40. Uh, we're moving some people, be advised, moving some people to, to chase back a Broadway. We're setting up an ad hoc, an, an ad hoc uh, emergency, emergency, emergency post with EMS personnel, okay? So we could use more people because the place is filling up with, with engines. And it would have probably taken out the electrical in the building where elevators wouldn't work and people struggling to get some way out of that tower. And it takes a long time to come down over 100 stories and to think about the possible loss of life that just occurred by the collapse of, of that southeastern tower is just amazing. Minna Kathuria is with the Today Show, and she apparently saw the collapse of one of those towers. Minna? Yes, hi, Matt. Tell me what you saw. Well, on the corner of Duane and West Broadway, um, walking down towards the Twin Towers, and it just collapsed. It looked like a, um, it looked sort of like the building just demolished smoke. Clouds, I mean, smoke, clouds of smoke everywhere. People running towards me. I was going towards the Twin Towers. People were going away from the towards, away from the towers, and it was just people running. Like I've, I've, I've never seen a scene like it. Okay, have you? Where from where you were, Minna? Did you see many of the injured being treated? Is there is there any indication as the type of perimeter? that the EMS people no, were Matt, dealing with? No, I hadn't gotten uh, that close yet. They were sort of blocking off the street. Now what they're doing is totally clearing out the area. And more and more um, emergency officials are coming. Sir, how you doing? I'm doing uh, well, as good as uh, can be expected. Uh, I've got guys that will be launching in about 15 minutes. Appreciate it. Are they loaded? We've got hot guns. That's hot all guns? I've got. Well, that, that's good enough for me. I met some woman who was in the bu building to the right of, of the, where the first... Uh, first uh, thing happened and um, just all crying, having, wondering if the people that they know in the buildings next door are, are, are okay. Jamie, uh, Minna, thank you very much. Minna, take care of yourself. Jamie Gangel, our national correspondent, is, is on the phone now with some more information. Jamie? Katie, as you well know, buildings around town are being evacuated. The State Department has been evacuated. The White House has been evacuated. And the Pentagon has been evacuated. Intelligence officials tell me that they do believe at the Pentagon that that was a third plane going down. We have completely four collapsed. Blocks, five blocks from the World Trade Center. And, and we were standing here when, when there was some sort of collapse or explosion. And everyone started running in this direction. Police officers, pedestrians. EMTs, everybody came running this way. I saw a woman pushing a, a baby carriage, running for her life, and right behind them was a huge cloud of, of billowing smoke and ash and debris coming this way. Uh, the smoke has obviously cleared somewhat. Ma'am, she's with DCPI. Can you talk to us for just a second and bring us up to speed? Obviously, people have their hands full out here. It's not easy getting anyone to talk. Yeah, tell me where you were, what happened, what did you okay. see, what did you hear? First I went on Canal Street, I saw the fire. I saw the two buildings, I'm thinking it was a, it was a bomb because it's two of them. Anyway, when I got there, I tried to save people because I'm a doctor. When I tried to save people, in the moment we heard a big explosion coming down. Everything just went black. Everything came down, glass are popping, and people got hurt, stuff went on top of them. And it was a big explosion and everything got dark, real dark, like snow. You can see behind me, all oh, this is not snow, this is all from the building. 
It was a terrible nightmare. Where exactly were you standing when this happened? I was standing right in front of the Wells Trade Center. So you were down the block here? And right you came there, in the middle, right, yeah. Everything. Did you get hurt at all? No, not me. Did you see anyone around you getting caught up in it? Yeah, we was, I was with the firemen. We all we got hurt. We all went inside to this dark. We was inside the building where everything happened. But we came out alive. What's the, your name? My name is Dr. Angel. Did, were you able to, to assist? I also want to give you a heads up, Washington. Go ahead. United 9-3. Have you got information on that yet? Yeah, he's down. He's down? Yes. When did he land? Because we he have did, confirmation. He did, he did not land. Oh, he's down? Yes, yeah, somewhere up northeast of Camp David. Northeast of Camp David. That's the, that's the last report. They don't know exactly where. Confusion reigns. This is clearly a national catastrophe. There will be some response from the White House. Jet. It may have been a, a prop jet. Um, it may have been a jet, but it's a smaller version of the jets which so many people in so many middle-sized American cities are now accustomed to seeing. In terms of the realm of terrorism, this is going to be a real uh, first test, uh, literally by fire, for the Bush administration. You recall, after the embassy bombings in East Africa, uh, the Clinton administration uh, waited about 10 days and launched a missile attack against the camps of Osama bin Laden, who they felt confident at that time they could say was responsible for it and who's since been charged in it. Uh, in this case, I think this ratchets up. Uh, Excuse me. This is the Pentagon we're looking at now, according to my, uh, according to my monitor. And again, it is hard to, to grasp what part of the building we do not know if they're in the courtyard or outside, but you can see that a fairly considerable amount of damage has been done. We do not know whether these are offices or storage areas. The Pentagon is full of uh, many thousands of people uh, every day. The Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, has been saying only yesterday and today that he wants to reduce the, uh, the bloatedness, as he put it, as he alluded to it in the military and the bureaucracy. But this is the great home of the, of the military bureaucratic establishment. Um, John, before I come back to you, uh, Dennis Cross is on the phone. Dennis, do you hear me? Dennis Cross, do you hear me? Yes, I can, Peter. Dennis, I understand that you were in the World Trade Center when either this or these attacks occurred. Am yeah, I correct? That's, that's correct. It was, uh, I guess it was slightly before 9 o'clock, and uh, I, I work on the 36th floor in One World Trade Center. I work for in the insurance industry. Probably hundreds of people uh, in my industry uh, in both of these two buildings. And what was ha what happened? Um, as I was, uh, hey Dennis, just let me stop for a second. Um, somebody is trying another telephone on this line. Could they please not do that while we listen to Mr. Cross? Thanks. Go ahead, Mr. Cross. Go ahead, Dennis. Uh, essentially, I was, uh, you know, sort of at my desk working, general office activity, and uh, felt an enormous. Uh, so I it almost felt like an earthquake. Like I could literally feel and see things in the office moving and the floor moving. Um, immediately after what it was some sort of explosion or something uh, there was an enormous volume of debris and paper it almost looked like a dirty parade uh, all of this material just falling down I, I was looking out the uh, south side of the uh, of one world trade and uh, everybody in the office was kind of screaming kind of gathering in the middle and I went to the window and uh, I immediately saw one woman uh, who appeared to be motionless. Literally yeah, flying no. in the air after the uh, reverberations of the collapse, people just started to run. There were those who were there just to look at it, just to, to watch what was happening, some even, you know, into it for the excitement value. And their emotions turned from excitement to complete fear and horror that they too might be hurt in this. And of course, there's the fears for the people who were inside the building, the people who, who Byron saw jump, but also who was underneath there, who uh, might have been closer to the scene. Because I'm telling you, you hear me? Can you all hear me? Yes. We're being we're being evacuated here from the building, and I'll uh, just tell you real quickly, when that collapse happened, if it had been on our side of the building, we would have been covered with that debris. That collapse spread far and wide, and uh, the, the, the crowds that were nearby to look at this, I don't think were far enough from the scene. Now, I'm inside a school, which is three, four blocks from where this uh, whole disaster happened, and they were methodically trying to get the kids out of here and get 
them out of here fast. They saw those, the rolling smoke and the debris coming toward the school, and it was not just a matter of being, you know, a couple of yards away from it. It was get the kids out of here to a different place and quickly get your classes together and get them out of here and meet somewhere else. And they had the intercom system going wild here. Cops were running through the halls, and Byron and I were able to get into a, a small uh, office here where we could get to a phone. But right now we are in an area that is completely evacuated, and we're trying. We're talking to uh, the NYPD right now about what to do and uh, where to be at this point. I don't know if they're going to let us stay on this phone, but I will tell you, and I'm sure, Dan, as you've been reporting, uh, 50,000 people work at the World Trade Center complex, and uh, at this point, there is a severe fear of loss of life at this point and massive casualties. You've got traffic at a complete standstill, and uh, obviously flights in the area have been suspended. We've got a cop here on the scene. Uh, were you actually here? Were, were you here when this happened? Officer? Yes, I just Can you that it was, it was set on fire. Tell me, tell me exactly where you were and what you saw. Can you do that? Okay, the cop right now is working on other things. Sorry about that. We're just trying to get a sense of what happened. I'm sure you've heard a, a lot of different accounts from different views of this. You've got two towers on fire, and now the one that is literally lost a part of the top of the building. And, and Byron and I were trying to figure out, was it the top quarter of the building, the top eight? It was a massive section of the building, so massive that people who were inside the building still alive were jumping. And at this point, what we are dealing with, I'm just looking out a closed door here at the chaos out in the hall here. People are still trying to figure out where to go. They're asking the cops uh, how to get out of here. Where's the safest play to go? And what we're trying to do right now is keep a handle on the chaos here, keep a handle on where people are, and we're going to stay on the story. Right now, Dan, I'll throw it back to you. Mika Brzezinski covering at the scene of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. Uh, if you're asking how many people injured, how many people killed, the answer is we do not know. One portion of one of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center here in New York uh, has collapsed. Now, uh, American Airlines Flight 11, a Boeing 767, flying from Boston to Los Angeles, is reported by the Associated Press to have reported uh, a terrorist takeover uh, in flight. Uh, we have not confirmed it on our own. This is according to the Associated Press. Uh, that you, assumptions can be made all over the place, but the fact is we don't know what airplanes hit the World Trade Centers. We do know that they were two separate airplanes uh, not far apart. It's believed that an aircraft of some kind also caused the explosion fire at the Pentagon. Now, there are reports out of Washington at this hour. Keep in mind that the FAA has ordered what effect, in effect is a lockdown on air flights over the United States. Uh, planes in the air have been ordered to land. Uh, they don't want any aircraft flying anywhere in the United States if they can keep from it at this moment. And here's the reason. Reports of all kinds are flying around, but there is one report that another aircraft has been hijacked uh, in the eastern corridor. Or a uh, credible claim of responsibility for these astonishing attacks uh, is made that we can, we can believe. Again, you're looking again at the, uh, at the, uh, at the interstate road, that, inter Route 395, that runs down past the Pentagon. Uh, that is just, of course, across the river from, from Washington, D.C. And the smoke you're seeing is indeed from the area out by the helipad, which can be seen by drivers as they go by the Pentagon, and, uh, and uh, you're seeing the smoke uh, from it. It appeared from some pictures we saw earlier, John, of the building itself, that while it was clearly damaged, and in the area where the hit was uh, very uh, badly damaged, uh, it did not look like the damage to the overall building, which is massive, was all that extensive. Right. Well, that is uh, perhaps a touch of good news, Britt Brit Hume. Thanks very much. Let's go back to our man in Lower Manhattan, Rick Leventhal, who is, again, not able to hear us, but uh, trying to bring you from the ground the perspective of, of what he witnessed, felt, and heard. And I think Rick is not clearly aware as we are that the upper floors of Tower 1 of the World Trade Center have collapsed completely. And, you know, it felt like a bomb hit or a plane hit or something like that. But the whole floor a plane was did hit. A plane did hit. Yeah, and then we looked out the window, all we saw was debris all over the place. But we thought the building was going to topple over. It was going so Well, one shaking. of them did. One of them did. We were in Tower 1. We made it out. Well, you're a lucky man. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. All right, take care. Clearly, this is a nationwide catastrophe, but folks, uh, phone lines in New York are virtually shut down, so you're not going to be able to call your loved ones 
If you have any other way, perhaps email. If you have any other way of contacting your loved ones, try and do it without using the telephone because telephone lines in New York are at gridlock right now. Let's listen in again to this eyewitness. I have a lot of faith in God, and I hope a lot of other people made it out the building as I did. All right, thank you. Tell me, tell me what you saw. Stop and talk to us. Where were you? Top of the roof, 25 Park Place. Me and a super so heard the loud noise from a jet. We look up and we see this big jet, like a 737 or a 727. It was a 757. About that, it was a big jet. Yeah. We saw it come, just looking like it's sideways. At first, we thought it was just going to try to miss it. Bang! Right into the middle of it, uh, in, like around the 70th floor. And then, half hour later, we see the second one bang into it. We're on the roof of it. We're a block away. I mean, well, what's going through your mind when you see this happen? You see bodies flying out of the sky, and you can't do nothing about it. You tell me. You tell me what you think. I mean, uh, my heart's in my mouth. I mean, I, I pray for these people. It's, it's, there's no words to describe what's going on out there. I mean, you see bodies just coming a half hour later, still coming out of the goddamn sky. It's devastating. Devastating. I can't imagine anything worse than this. It's got to be, I can't imagine, you know everybody on the plane must have died, the floor, I got friends of mine on 104th floor, friends on other buildings, I just spoke to one of my friends a half hour prior to that, getting ready to go upstairs to go to work. It's, it's I mean, I've seen a lot of construction accidents, I've seen a lot of bad things happen. I've never seen a jet fall out of the sky into a building, no less once, but twice. Devastating. I want to bring into the uh, conversation uh, General Al Haig, the former Secretary of State. Now, General Haig, at a time like this, what, how does America respond prudently with the proper amount of caution and, and yet with, with whatever force needs to be applied? Well, first, we have to know the, the full limits of this tragedy, and it's unprecedented, of course. Uh, but we have to stay, above all, united and calm and ready to take resolute action, which sometimes we have failed to do in the recent past, when the perpetrators are, are uncovered, and we have many, many uh, indicators of precisely who they are. Uh, this was too broadly based a terrorist act to be just a, a few crazies. This is a, a terrorist movement, and we know where they are where they're located today. And obviously, as a nation, we're going to have to take action against them. But uh, clearly that action is going to be some days, if not weeks or months away. Oh, it has to be very carefully assessed before any action is taken, of course. And we have to be uh, reasonably assured that uh, those that we are moving against are the, the perpetrators. And, and I think we know where to center our look. Uh, all we have to do is look at the world today with the Palestinian and, and bin Laden groups. Who, who, who are the terrorists that you think are the most likely suspects? Well, I'm not going to speculate because uh, I don't have inside knowledge, and it would be uh, rather foolish to do that. But I do think we have the means to assess it, and there will be many statements, many uh, parties claiming credit somehow already have done so for the World Trade Center uh, bombings. Clearly, with what's going on in the skies where even apparently innocent civilian airliners can be employed as, as weapons of terrorists. What is our military doing right now, General Haig? What should they be doing? Well, they have to be on full alert, and I would have hoped that we would get some aircraft up in the air to enforce the ban on flights. Uh, that has to be done if it has not already been done. And I'm sure it has been. We saw the same thing. All right, General uh, Alexander Haig, former Secretary of State, thanks for being with us. Uh, Rick Leventhal, once again, with our producer Carlos Van Meek, is in Lower Manhattan. Uh, you cannot even see the sky there because of the soot, the ash, the crumbled concrete that is continuing to rain down after one of the two towers of the World Trade Center, the upper floors, collapsed. This after this apparent terrorist attack this morning that sent a, a large jetliner, perhaps two large jetliners, slamming into the Twin Towers. Come over this way, Pat. You can see Fine. the chaos. We can see the top of the building from here. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Oh. When it comes down, we're... All right. We do need to put it down.
of people either in them or in the immediate area adjacent to them. This is, there is simply no way to accurately describe the emotion this evokes in people all over the world, friends of the United States and enemies of the United States as well. Plummet, and then a third one, and then the entire top of the building just blew up, and splinters of debris are falling on the street. Where I'm right now, there's a thick plume of smoke, and you can see crowds of people, including emergency service workers and police officers, running from the scene, screaming. And, and there's, a, there's a school nearby where there were kids in the schoolyard. That has been emptied out, and they're running up the street now, too. The, the whole sort of the neighborhood, I'd say several blocks up, is covered by this almost powdery smoke, little tiny pieces of building you can see just floating in the, in the wind around it. It's almost like a huge cloud had, had kind of enveloped that part of lower Manhattan. Uh, it is just one of those awful moments that you need to look at for a minute or two to absorb exactly what has happened two of the most recognizable buildings in the city of New York have been attacked and both of them appear to have collapsed at least oh, in part. The second of the two collapses taking place just a moment or so ago, perhaps two or three minutes ago. There are also apparently coordinated attacks that have taken place in Washington on the Pentagon. The State Department has been evacuated. Just a few moments ago, as we said. Uh, negative on it, okay? Right now, we're all alone. The second building came down. I can't see. So we have no contact with anybody at this time, okay? Part of tower number one collapsing. These are shots from the ground of that scene. There have been a frantic efforts to get people out of the tower. Now this was again, this is tape, and you can see now whether that was an explosion or exactly what happened that caused that second tower to collapse. We can't. You need to read this. Region commander has declared that we can shoot down tracks that do not respond to our uh, direction. Okay. I'll pass out the weapons. Okay. The region, com the region commander has declared that we can shoot down aircraft that do not respond to our direction. Let's copy that. People really staring in disbelief, and then as you saw, of course, the pictures watching that tower come down, people just couldn't believe their eyes. Police then pushing people immediately, people turning around and starting running ways, blocks away from, from the site. There is black smoke and uh, is covering. This is Italian 4, Alpha. Yeah. I have dozens and dozens of firemen. We're at the bulkhead on the Hudson River side of the World Trade Center. We have medical emergencies. We have EMS on the team treating possible heart attacks. Uh, we're in the process of getting some kind of a roll call. We're going to try to keep the units together here, Kate. Earlier today, trying to get in touch with loved ones, very concerned. And then, of course, some people watching the other tower come down earlier and then a group of people then watching this other tower come down a woman passing me covered in soot basically the sky is just black you can't even see down to lower manhattan from the vantage point right now the police have cleared off all these streets pushing people away police telling us that you have to get out of here to get out of here pushing people away in in garages it's uh, an unbelievable scene aaron you can see in this uh, shot our viewers can a helicopter shot coming across the harbor um, the statue of liberty 
prominent in the foreground and smoke and devastation and tragedy in the background, a tragedy that continues to unfold and one that still has many, many unanswered questions. We have a report now that a car bomb, a car bomb has exploded at the State Department. We are working to confirm that as well. Howard Safer is a former New York City Police Commissioner, the top police job here in the city, and he joins us for a few moments. Mr. Safer, what do you see? I when see. You look at that. What do you see? I see something that's unimaginable. I see our, what is a police commissioner's worst nightmare. Uh, this is a situation uh, that obviously was well planned, well coordinated, and you know the loss of life that's taking place down there is just incredible, and is going to strain the emergency services of this city to the hilt. Are, are you? Are you hearing any specific information? Are you hearing anything about the number of injuries, the number of fatalities, the number of people in that building, those buildings? Are you getting any of that information from well, I, I know there colleagues? Are, I, I know there are 50,000 people who work in the World Trade Center. I, I know that every ambulance and every fire company in the city uh, and has been called in and dispatched there. Uh, it's unimaginable, but the loss of life is going to be huge. You're as familiar with the city's plan or plans for these kinds of uh, incidents as anyone in the city. Uh, in all honesty, does the plan cover the scope of what appears to have happened here? No, uh, we have an Office of Emergency Management. Uh, the plans for responding to a disaster are probably as good as any in the world, but nobody ever would contemplate that we would lose the two World Trade Centers and in this manner. Tell me what's happening there, would you guess, in the sense that what, what are police doing? What's the first thing that has to happen? Triage? The first thing is triage. The first thing is to identify who can be treated, who cannot be treated, uh, to get those ambulances to hospitals. Every hospital's emergency room is open. Everything south of the Brooklyn Bridge is in a dust cloud. There's no visibility. People all over the street travel is near impossible. You have your support, and you have to have people who are constantly in there doing something. You know, I, I was also fire commissioner before I was no. police commissioner, and you know, it's no longer an issue, unfortunately. But a high-rise fire like that is almost impossible to fight. At this point, has, would, would you say that every police officer, and there are, what, 40,000? There are 41,000 41, police, police officers. 41,000 police officers in the city have been called in. Oh, every one of them. I know every firefighter has been called and in. And how many firefighters? Uh, there are 14,000 firefighters, and I'm sure we'll be getting help with equipment uh, from our adjoining communities as well. I mean, this is a logistical exercise that makes the first attack on the World Trade Center, you know, relatively small. To find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. That was George W. Bush about an hour ago speaking from Longboat Key, Florida. He is en route to Washington, D.C. We're looking at some pictures on the ground, or we were, of apparently some of the victims. Yes, he is on the ground. Sure. Quite extraordinary. This, these are the emergency workers who are coming back. It was just about 10 minutes ago that we described to you the possibility of that North Tower collapsing. About five minutes after we went off the air, it did collapse. Once again, we have no idea at this point the loss of life. I can only tell you there were hundreds of emergency workers down there, about five or six blocks. It took probably about, I would say, no more than 50 or 60 seconds for that dust cloud, dust and smoke, to literally make it the five or six blocks up here and begin to envelop us, at which point we started to move out of the way. There were literally dozens and dozens of firemen who were trying to run past us. In fact, our cameraman even put one of the captains in his car and drove him down to a command post. The people who you see here are pretty much all emergency workers. Many of them that I have seen in the last two to three minutes, quite frankly, are coming out of here. And remember this, these are professionals. They're coming out of there looking literally stunned, in shock, many of them, struggling for breath, obviously in serious distress. Breathing problems are the biggest problem for those who manage to make it safely out of that 
area down below us. You can't see much more than a block south of me right now. And the World Trade Center probably stands about 10 blocks south of where I am at this moment. And as you can see now, the dust is beginning to pick up here. It really depends on which way the wind blows as to whether or not we get heavy dust or not. But at this point, I can tell you that in the first few minutes, emergency workers were trying just basically to get out of there, to survive. You could see that written in their faces. The situation was so desperate, they just wanted to get out of there. Now, many of them are beginning to regroup. A couple of them asked me where their commander might be. They're trying to get together and go back in there and try to take care of the people who obviously are in serious trouble. There's no other way to describe it. The language here, uh, at times, if I slip into language which seems a little melodramatic, uh, forgive me, but this is uh, a circumstance which uh, uh, is very, very difficult to describe in many ways without sounding melodramatic. Certainly in more than 20 years of, of covering horrific events, this is something that I've never seen before. Um, as we say, the emergency workers now beginning to try to gather themselves. Over there you can see a police emergency service unit. Uh, they are trying basically now to reestablish some kind of a safe perimeter. And many of the emergency workers basically just happy to be alive. Certainly that picture tells it all. Many of them just happy to be alive at this point, uh, having survived what is an extraordinary event, the collapse of two towers. As we said earlier in our report, 110 stories each. Uh, I will tell you that what fell, what I saw fall, had to be at least 40, 50 stories of that building at first. The skeleton was left at about, I would say, the 50 or 60th floor after the shell, after the uh, structure of the building fell down. The, uh, the skeleton, the steel skeleton, was literally sheaved off, and it took probably about another 30 seconds before the skeleton collapsed into the street. That was the last we saw of the World Trade Center, uh, and that was maybe 10 minutes ago uh, when those... Uh, that final skeleton, the metal skeleton, steel skeleton, collapsed into the street. That was but NBC's Pat Dawson. Again, he's standing about 10 blocks from where the World Trade Center towers used to stand. You're looking at the collapse of one of those towers right now. We now have an AP News alert out of Pittsburgh. Officials at Somerset County Airport are confirming the crash of a large plane just north of the airport. That's about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Again, officials at Somerset County Airport confirm the crash of a large plane north of that airport, which is located about 80 miles to the southeast of the city of Pittsburgh. We do not know whether that crash of that plane is related to what has become an obvious terrorist attack both here in New York City and in Washington, D.C. at the Pentagon. Collapse. We were uh, several hundred yards away, but we clearly saw the building come down. I heard your report of a fourth explosion. I can't confirm that, but we, hear, we, we heard some boom and then the building fold in on itself. We are told, Brian, hang on, we are told that the Secretary of Defense is being uh, evacuated from the Pentagon. Uh, the Pentagon, a portion of the, of the Pentagon has collapsed uh, after, uh, and I'm, I'm not precisely sure on this, and I, I want to tell you when I'm not precisely sure, but apparently a plane or a helicopter hit part of the Pentagon mm -hmm. itself. As you take a look at the pictures there, I must say every time we hear a plane coming up overhead, it gets a little a little nervous uh, where we are. Um, whatever is happening and whoever is responsible, we have no way of knowing if it's played out yet or if it's just going on. So every time we hear a plane go by, we wonder what the situation is and where it is headed. That sound, we're, we're told by a person here, they believe that is a, a fighter jet. Federal office buildings around the country, is that correct? All over the country have been closed or just in Washington? Well, we, um, we were not allowed into um, the, fe uh, the federal courthouse here where CNN maintains a workspace. The officers just said, we are, we're not allowing you in. I think that's a security pro precaution. Got it. Uh, stay with me a little bit. All federal office buildings now, all federal office buildings in Washington, D.C. Uh, are being evacuated as we speak to you now. Um, there are 
a variety of reports, and it's important to try and uh, and uh, put this in some kind of order. But the the most important things to tell you, if you're just joined in, is that a, what has all the makings of a, an extraordinary extraordinarily well-planned terrorist attack on both Washington and New York has taken place this morning. The trade centers here in New York, the two World Trade Center towers have collapsed after being hit by a plane. Uh, Maria Hinoza joins us on the phone. She is uh, in New York, uh, down uh, near the building. Maria, what can you tell us? Well, I'm actually at St. Vincent's Hospital right now, where at about uh, 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes after the first explosion, they started seeing... Division 6 acting again. The access, the, um, down the, you know, FDR is clear. PD has the FDR lanes open, but have all units approaching use extreme caution. Traffic is going wrong way and numerous civilians. Okay. Condition. Uh, outside the hospital, people are coming coming in, trying to help, to donate blood. Essentially, everybody here at this hospital is, is in a state of shock. I mean, I walked into the testing area, and the women here who usually just draw blood are also extraordinarily um, moved and shocked. They're moving in and out of the emergency room to try to help as many people as possible. Now, outside a block, uh, about um, a block away from here, where you really had a bird's eye view of the two twin towers, which are the landmarks of New York City, um, the people stopped, the entire traffic has stopped. People have poured out of buildings and were watching, in fact, as one of the towers collapsed. And then you're really seeing a lot of people trying to move north, away from any place downtown near the World Trade Center area. People are just walking. The subways are stopped entirely all around the area of the World Trade Center. You can't get below 14th Street. And there's there just feels to be like a massive exodus of people walking north to get away from the area as far away as they possibly can. Maria, I know Kitty Pilgrim is with you as well. Right, I'm right Kitty, here. tell us what you've been able to report well, I'm, on. I'm actually reporting from Kennedy Airport at the United Terminal. Uh -huh. and, um, I was here this morning flying out uh, when they made an announcement about 20 of 10 that all flights were grounded. People thought it was just a normal course of uh, airport business these days. And so there was not much of a reaction. Um, and then the news started to trickle through. It was not an official announcement made uh, over the intercom. Kitty, Kitty, let me interrupt for just yep. a second. Uh, the Associated Press is reporting that uh, federal officials fear that a second hijacked plane or another hijacked plane is headed towards the Pentagon. And I'm looking for the time on this. Uh, we will continue to check that out. Kitty, I apologize for interrupting. Why don't you continue? Did we lose her? Um, everyone didn't react, but then the uh, news came through. I have never seen Kennedy in this condition. I've been here many times. People are in absolute shock. No one's talking. They were just staring at each other with their arms dropped to their sides. A pin could drop in the United Terminal. There were a couple hundred people there, and no one was saying anything. Um, after about 20 minutes, people rushed to the phones. You cannot phone out. There's no real access back to the city. People are trying to get back. They've unloaded the baggage from the planes. They've asked that everyone pick up their bag and take it, and take it out of the terminal and take it home. And they're asking everyone to please leave. People are just finding it difficult to leave. Um, they are not officially evacuating uh, Kennedy Airport at this point, at least at the United Terminal. Uh, the attendants have been asked to stay. And um, again, there's still several hundred people standing around not knowing what to do. No one's even speaking. Of, of black smoke and uh dozens of fire engines, uh, uh, medevac helicopters. They are rigging that part of the lawn of the Pentagon, which is where the uh, helipad that the Secretary of Defense uses is located. They are rigging that uh, to handle uh, mass casualties. Uh, they're bringing in uh, large numbers of stretchers uh, to deal with this. Um, this uh, all appearances are that for the uh, first time in its 50-plus year history, the Pentagon has been attacked. Attacked. People have been injured. If there are any fatalities, it is not yet known. We have no further details on a bomb, a car bomb, uh, which was reported to have exploded outside the State Department uh, in New York at the World Trade Center. Uh, it is a, a, a disaster of history. Two four and one member's out of the building. I got two members trapped. I can't tell the command post. Two members trapped in the promenade between the two towers. 
of, of some mysterious plane crashes in Pennsylvania. And to bring you up to date on that, Russ Mitchell. Thank you very much, Dan. Yes, there is a report of a large plane crash in western Pennsylvania at Somerset County Airport. According to the Associated Press, it crashed uh, about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. The plane is believed to be a Boeing 767. It crashed about 10 o'clock Eastern time. That would have been about 45 minutes ago. And the crash, of course, came the same morning of these crashes into the World Trade Center here in New York. If we can go back uh, in the control room and look at the video from early this morning at 8.45 and to see how this all began. 8.45 this morning. Let's see if we can look at that. The planes hitting the towers. This is the second plane. Second plane happened about 9 o'clock this morning. As you can see, it looks like it's coming right into the tower. That'd be Tower 2. In a moment, you'll see an explosion. That was shortly after 9 o'clock. The first crash. You're seeing Tower 1 closest to you. Happened about 8.45. There are reports from people in Brooklyn, another borough of the city of New York, about three miles from the World Trade Center. Saw office paper, office paper from these towers come down in their neighborhoods. The impact of these explosions was that great. Russ Mitchell with me at the anchor desk here at CBS News World Headquarters. Uh, the, the picture of the airplane actually flying into the World Trade Center Tower. An incredible, indelible scene. And then the videotape, which we've played from time to time, of one of the towers itself collapsing. Bridget Foley is outside St. Vincent Hospital here in New York, where some of the injured have been brought. Bridget? Uh, hi, Dan. I'm at St. Vincent's Hospital in Lower Manhattan, below 14th Street. It's a level one trauma center. Um, hundreds of the wounded and critically wounded are expected to arrive here in the coming hours. On the sidewalk, the scene is scores. Dozens. Engine 3-3 three, three is being manned by an off-duty member from Rescue 1. Uh, be advised, it appears that we have lost water pressure down in Lower Manhattan. Can you have Marine 1 or any other available fireboat respond to Vesey Street in, on the west side? We're going to need water supply into the area, okay? For anyone in the New York area that includes the suburbs, to please go to an area hospital and give blood. It's going to become critical as the wounded uh, come into local hospitals. Also, one of the other big worries here is smoke inhalation. We've already seen um, uh, dozens of people come in on ambulances covered in debris, uh, barely able to get onto the gurney or into a chair. It's, it's a very disturbing scene. Bridget yeah. Foley at St. Vincent Hospital uh, here in New York where yeah. some of the wounded are being brought. An eyewitness, Associated Press reporter Dunstan Priel, described what he called a strange sucking sound from the Trade Center buildings after the first building collapsed. Keep in mind that both of the World Trade Center buildings have now collapsed. He described what he said was a strange sucking sound, quote, windows shattered, People were screaming and diving for cover. People walked around like ghosts, covered in dirt, weeping and wandering, dazed, unquote. And those people who were walking around like ghosts, covered in dirt, weeping and wandering, dazed, were, keep in mind, among the lucky ones. How many have been killed and injured uh, in these coordinated terrorist attacks today? what President Bush has described as apparent terrorist attacks. Uh, the total number of killed and wounded, we simply do not know. Obviously, we are, we are in the middle of an extraordinary catastrophe that started about 8.45 Eastern time here in New York when one plane crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. About a half an hour after that, as people were converging, as fire and police and rescue teams were converging on the scene, a second plane appeared uh, to the west of the Trade Center buildings. And slammed into the second tower. That's what you just saw. Fire shooting out the north and east side. Uh, unit with an urgent, go ahead. Right, listen, we got a number of people trapped here for the TV's collapse. We need a hand to get them out, okay? 
Yeah, about four feet under. I really don't know. Where were you operating? What side, guys? Okay. Left side of tower number one or tower two? Yeah. Tower one. That hit one of the Trade Center towers. About a half an hour after that, perhaps a little bit longer, lose track of time a little bit in these situations. The first tower, or the, uh, let me correct that, the south tower, the second tower, uh, the one to the left collapsed. Uh, it collapsed in a cascade of smoke and spark. And what we cannot tell you is if there was a second explosion uh, that caused that collapse or if it was simply. That's the first one. That's the uh, south tower collapsing. Um, and that was about a half hour, give or take, after the planes hit the tower. Then shortly after that, just as the smoke was starting to clear away, the second tower, and that's what you're looking at now. Again, this was not very long ago, 10, 15 minutes ago, the second tower. It almost looks, it almost looks like one of those implosions of buildings that you see, except there is nothing controlled about this. This is devastation. How many people, there are 50,000 people who normally go to work in the Trade Center buildings. How many of those people had arrived already? How many of those people were trapped in the upper stories? How many of those people have been hurt? How many of those people died? We cannot tell you now. We can tell you that hospitals throughout the New York area are receiving literally hundreds of patients. As, as, and they are performing triage. They are trying to figure out who could be treated, who needs help first. This is sort of standard operating procedure. We are just being told now that Israel has evacuated all its diplomatic missions around the world. Uh, Israel has evacuated its missions. We are told now that Yasser Arafat has condemned these attacks, and we don't know yet who's behind them. Britain has condemned these attacks. Germany has convened its National Security Council, and we will check and see if events are going on in those places, or if that is simply a reaction to what has gone on here in, in Washington and in New York. CNN's Gene Meserve joins us on the phone from Washington. Gene. Hay Street, which is one of the major thoroughfares here in Washington, it is absolute gridlock. It takes about 15 minutes to drive one block. Ordinarily, this time of day, there'd be nothing near this kind of traffic. We're, we're 84. Be advised, we have numerous injured people on board, babies and uh, hundreds of people. So we might have to relay them off our boat with another boat or something. Okay. This traffic situation. Many people trying to use their cell phones. However, cell phone service has become very difficult in this town because of the crush on circuits. For the most part, people appear to be very calm and collected. I will tell you, though, that as I drove, I looked at the car next to me full of some young women who I would guess were in their 20s, several of them crying their eyes out, obviously very upset as they listened to the radio and heard the news of what is happening in this city in New York also. Aaron, back to you. Jean, thanks. Jean was in Washington this morning as uh, she and the rest of uh the organization continues to gather what facts we can, what facts are available in the wake of the extraordinary chaos that has followed this extraordinarily horrendous terrorist attack. American Airlines, uh, we are told, one of the planes involved in this was a hijacked American Airlines 767 uh, out of Logan Airport in Boston. American Airlines will say what is knows, what is, is known as you look at the White House being evacuated a short time ago, or is that live? And I'm not sure uh, on my monitor which it is. I believe it's taped from a short time ago. In any case, American Airlines uh, will talk to reporters in about a half hour or so, 11.30 Eastern time, one of its planes involved in this, and we will bring that press conference to you live when it happens. Here in New York, hospitals are being overwhelmed uh, as hundreds of patients are being brought in and being treated. We cannot tell you, uh, we, we would not even begin to guess how, what the numbers in this will be, how many people will have died by the time by the time this uh, day is over, how many injuries have taken place in both Washington and New York. But as uh, former police commissioner Howard Safer told us a few moments ago, obviously the numbers are going to be extraordinary. Who do we have on the phone, guys? Just help me out here. 
Patty, are you there? Yes, I am here. W what do you got? About an hour ago, I was on the corner of Broadway and Park Place. That's about a thousand yards from the World Trade Center when the first tower collapsed. It was a massive explosion. At the time, the police were trying desperately to evacuate people from the area. When that explosion occurred, it was like the scene out of a horror film. People started okay. stampeding away Patty, from it. Patty, Patty, I'm going to interrupt you uh, for a second. We, we told you there was a second plane that went down, this one around 80 uh, miles or so uh, southeast of Pittsburgh. Uh, we'll try now to connect with KDKA TV in Pittsburgh. Well, just so much for planning. We try, we will try again. Uh, again, we, we have reports that a plane has crashed in the Pittsburgh area, southeast of Pittsburgh, about 80 miles. And uh, at varying times, we've heard that this was a 767 and a 747. I'm not sure it matters which it is. What matters is that a plane has crashed in the Pittsburgh area. The Pentagon continues to monitor reports that another plane, a hijacked plane, is headed for that area. If there's any question about that, that. They were uh, anticipating new kinds of threats. Uh, all the money in the uh, counterterrorism budget went towards preparation for a BW uh, or nuclear attacks on U.S. soil. But uh, what we have seen time and time again that terrorists mm. are able to exploit conventional materials uh, in a very devastating way. What McVeigh did at Oklahoma City in 1995, uh, using commercially available materials uh, to some devastating effect, although they weren't the casualties that we see today. But uh, 1993, uh, the uh, hey, but Vince, let me Vince, let me yeah, interrupt sure. you for a second, and and I apologize. I sound no, like fine. on the attack here, but um, there is a there's a feeling in the you notice I haven't called anybody a terrorism expert this morning. I don't think anyone wants to be known as a Thank terrorism expert. Thank you very much, and because today. because but we have a series of terrorism experts who appear in our lives, and sound and sometimes sound off knowledgeably. I exclude you from this, by the way, otherwise I wouldn't raise it in your presence. And sound off, you know, knowledgeably about uh, how we know this group and that group and that group. And this is, among other things, a desperate failure of intelligence uh, in both the human and technical area. Am I right? No, there's no question about it, Peter. It's a, it's a major intelligence failure. The inability mm -hmm. to anticipate this kind of uh, a terrorism event on U.S. soil. I, I think that uh, they were focused on bin Laden in Afghanistan. They were focused on U.S. facilities abroad. And I don't think they believe that bin Laden or a consortium of groups collaborating together had the capability or the willingness to do this kind of thing. As, as Is my, that a, a false assumption? Obviously. Yeah. Uh, we saw what they did with the USS Cole uh, last year. Uh, it was a very sophisticated U.S. warship that was almost totally destroyed with the loss of 17 lives uh, by uh, suicide bombers. Mm. And just one other thing before I let you go back and, and work the, the sure. beat for us, if you would, and that is Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. Some of my colleagues and I argue here about the U.S. emphasis on bin Laden. It's bin Laden, bin Laden, bin Laden. It's at the United States because only one focus at a time right. in, in terms of somebody involved in terrorism. Mobile command, Spencer, to Manhattan, okay? Mobile command, Spencer, we have firefighters from uh, four engines responding to the location, off duty members. You have members trapped on the west side of tower number one. We believe it's Captain Fuentes. He's unable to give us his exact location. Reported to be several members trapped. Do you have that message and copy it? The, the, uh, resources and the coordination and the direction to do these kinds of events requires capabilities beyond any one single group. In other words, there had to be cooperation, possibly with some state support, uh, to do this kind of thing. Okay. I mean, we've been hearing uh, for the last uh, two months that bin Laden was getting ready to do something, but I don't think anyone was looking here as the object of his his next event. Okay, Vince, I much appreciate it, and I hope you go work the beat for us and you check okay. back with us through the day. I'm, by the way, this is not for an immediate discussion, but I'm sitting next to, to uh, John Miller of ABC News, who you've heard often this morning, is one of the only reporters in the world to have gone to see Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan, and as the day goes on, we clearly deal with this in, in, in even greater depth, John, than, than at the moment. But what we are now dealing with is a devastating human tragedy 
as the result of terrorism in New York City and in Washington, D.C. And just before I talk to John Cock, well, I'm more than happy to listen to these people on the street if we can possibly hear from them. But, but just in case, by some remote possibility at 8 o'clock uh, Pacific time, um, along the West Coast, you've just turned on your television or you're continuing to watch it. Let me just review for you uh, where we think we are at the moment, uh, because it is both a tragedy that has, un has revealed itself before the eyes of millions of people in the country watching on television, and a complete mystery as to how, as we heard um, from Vince Canastrara just a moment ago, how this could have happened in such a coordinated way with any of the intelligence services of the United States having much a clue about it. So just before... Um, We're set, uh, Pennsylvania, then there's this report uh, from an FBI uh, official telling Jim Stewart in Washington that what is, quote, uh, believed to have been a United Airlines plane of some kind crashed into Camp David, the presidential retreat uh, outside of Maryland. One is reminded as we look at these horrific scenes, and there's no other way to describe it. Earlier on, we were cautious as we thought the situation dictated about our reporting about even one of the World Trade Centers collapsing. Uh, we quoted the Associated Press saying that one had collapsed, and then we literally saw on the screen the second one collapse, and both of the World Trade Centers have been collapsed uh, in uh, this almost unbelievable attack. The late Edward R. Morrow said, no one can terrorize a whole nation unless we are all his accomplices, quote unquote. Something to ponder as we size up this situation, which may not be over. Uh, the picture that emerges, at least the initial picture, is one of a series of coordinated terrorist attacks. Uh, we know, do we know that for a fact? No. But the evidence at hand strongly indicates that that's what's happened. Uh, that an American Airlines plane on a flight from Boston to Los Angeles, according to American Airlines, is one of the planes that was hijacked and was crashed into the World Trade Center. Exclamation point, pause. If someone wrote it in a novel, it might be considered just a little beyond belief. Believe it, uh, it happened this morning, according to American Airlines. The second aircraft uh, that crashed into the other World Trade Center building uh, we've had various descriptions of it. No one knows where where it came from. Want us to walk into that spot or bring Rick? Get as close to that location as you can without being in the collapse zone, and you get the members. They're looking for manpower. That's the task force. Fourteen to They're looking for manpower and tools. You have members trapped in the street in collapse zones all over the World Trade Center. Cook at PS 234, just across the street from here. She, uh, it too, is three blocks from the scene of this disaster, and I'm sure you've gathered by now that is way too close to the scene when this was all going down because the soot and debris literally came upon us. If I walk outside the school right now, I am walking in um, four inches of soot and debris. Papers and checks from inside the World Trade Center have made their way. Pieces of offices and, and pieces of, of literally people's professional lives are just strewn all over the street. The broad base in which these, these attacks took place uh, took uh, a lot of coordination. Um, as Eric just mentioned, there may have been some involvement of uh, groups like Osama bin Laden or others. I would go on to say that as a result of the effort it took to, con to take these, uh, uh, have these incidents take place, is that we will find the people responsible, is that the, the trail will be hot, we will go after them, but everyone needs to realize a uh, state of calm, needs to come over the country and realize we're in control. We're these are incidents that have happened. We're containing those, and the government and the people will go on. And America still stands. Let's go to our man in America's capital, Britt Hume, with some new information. Britt? Just, just a few things, uh, John. Uh, one is, as you might imagine, there is a stupendous traffic jam developing uh, in the Washington area right now with all these buildings being evacuated and people, people heading home. Uh, there was a report. Remember we reported earlier that the bomb squad had been sent uh, over to Union Station, and apparently what that was about was what appeared to them to be an unexploded I'm trapped here because from the previous collapse. I need some extra now, okay? Are you at the west side of Royal Trade Center, the building number one, and it's shooting the street? In the rear side of building number one. The American Muslim Political Coordination Council, which is a function of the Council on American Islamic Relations, that's a group located here in Washington, has released a statement condemning the uh, apparent terrorist attack, saying, quote, American Muslims utterly condemn what are apparently vicious and cowardly acts of terrorism against innocent 
innocent civilians, joined with all Americans in calling for the swift apprehension and punishment of the perpetrators. No political cause, it says, could ever be assisted by such immoral acts. In addition, John, there was an attack kick, there was a report, I should say, kicking around on the air of an attack on Camp David, the presidential retreat uh, north of Washington. Uh, senior officials in the administration are saying that that is not true. So that's where that matter stands. Back All to right. you, John. Britt Hume, thanks for the updated information. Yeah, it, it bears repeating there will be a lot of rumors, a lot of panic swirling around today. Whatever you can do to stay calm, gather your loved ones around them and then just give them a hug is uh, certainly, that, that certainly uh, is advice that I think is worth taking. Uh, there is clearly a catastrophic loss of life in uh, the World Trade Center itself. Um, our, our colleague, standing Jeff Grief, well, we have a little more sound here the from doorman, witnesses. I went to firewall company. The doorman goes to me, oh, wow, i never seen a plane flying so low. And we, we looked out at it, and all of a sudden, boom, it, it, it seemed like it wasn't even real. And he, we came running over here closer to the place, and all of a sudden, we saw the other explosion. I was in B Tower. B Tower? A, 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 a Tower. What floor were you on? A B1. What floor? The first one. What happened? Tell me. When I, a big explosion happened. Some guy came out. His, his skin was all off. I helped him out. This is him all over. There's people jumping out of windows. I've seen at least 14 people jumping out of windows. It's, it's, it's horrific. I can't believe this is happening. Uh, anything else that you saw? Were you there for the second uh, hit yeah. by the plane? After, about 10 minutes later, the second building went off. Did you see it? Yes, I saw it. It just blew up. A big explosion. People started running. It was just chaos everywhere. Right. Yes, I was right there. I was in the. I was down in the basement. Came down. All of a sudden, the elevator blew up. Smoke. I dragged the guy out. His skin was hanging off, and I dragged him out and I helped him out of the out of, to the ambulance. Thank you. of the words of some of the witnesses here in Manhattan this morning and the pictures of what will, I suspect, before this is over, go down as one of the most horrific days in our lifetime. We're joined by our colleague, CNN's Jeff Greenfield. Aaron, you know what? In 1993, when terrorists bombed the World Trade Center, their plan was to knock one of the towers into the other, bringing them both down. That disaster was averted, and bad as that was, in a sense, America was lucky. Another terrorist attack in the planning was interrupted to blow up the uh, Lincoln Tunnel and submerge dozens, maybe hundreds of people. At the eve of the millennium, a terrorist, a suspected terrorist, was intercepted, you remember, at the Canadian border on his way to Seattle. On his way to Seattle. And I know that not so long ago, former President Clinton, in a private talk to a group, ruminated on how lucky the United States has been over the years to, with the combination of luck and the skill of anti-terrorist people, to avoid such things. What we are seeing now is nothing less than the worst nightmare that one could imagine come to life probably worse than anyone could have imagined. You may remember that Tom Clancy wrote a novel that ends with a terrorist uh, hijacker crashing into the Capitol. The worst act of terrorist violence on American soil, the Oklahoma City bombing, killed fewer than 200 people. All we know today is that tens of thousands of people worked in that complex that has been destroyed. And I, I hate to say it this way, but this may be the day that America's luck ran out. Right. It is hard, isn't it? I mean, you look out here, and you see the Statue of Liberty to the right, and these buildings off to the left, the attacks on Washington. We don't know a lot about who's behind this or what this is all about, but the symbolism of these attacks is extraordinary. Doc, we see that talked about on the, on the news every night, not so much from a terrorism standpoint, but from uh, you know a work standpoint, but um, people landed on major... Uh, airports every day undocumented. So it's extremely difficult uh, 
as Brian pointed out earlier, these terrorist cells are very uh, uh, insulated from each other. Uh, there's no particular hierarchy like there was in the mafia where you put a particular wiretap in at the top and you know everything that's going on. That's not the case here. We know there's tremendous hatred. I mean, we've talked about this in law enforcement for over a decade. Uh, they blew up the World Trade right. Center. They tried to bring the World Trade Center down. They, they've blown up uh, uh, many, many other government symbols. And uh, they, they, Ramsey Yosef tried to blow up 11 jumbo jets simultaneously. Okay, Jim, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's Katie Kirk. We want to go to, to, to uh, Pat Dawson, who's down at the World Trade Center with an official talking to that official. Pat? Recording? Yeah, recording it. Yes, uh, recording? Katie, uh, uh, forgive me. We're just trying to get the, obviously, as you can imagine. Joe, go ahead. You may put the uh, microphone on there. As you can imagine, this is a very, very difficult situation here. Uh, we are here with a couple of guests who can give us at least some insight into what's going on there. Uh, this is Chief William Hall of the Port Authority Police of New York. As we told you earlier, the Port Authority Police have jurisdiction over those tra the Trade Center. Uh, and also Alan Rice, who's the director of the World Trade Center. Gentlemen, if I get you just to stand like that. Um, first of all, Chief, do we have any idea of how many people are in there? We have no idea. Now, as you know, it was pretty much rush hour time that this took place this morning. So the numbers, we don't know yet. We how tried to get almost everybody out that we could uh, early on. After the first two crashes, when the planes hit the building, right. there was roughly about, I would say, what, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes between that and the point where the South Tower collapsed. Yeah. Um, how many people you were able to get out? Do you have any idea? We don't know. We tried, went, tried to do a floor by floor search, New York City police, the fire department, Port Authority police, best they could, tried to get everybody out. But as you know, uh, there were people still coming out after that building came down. Do you have any idea how many people would normally be in the building at 8.30 or north? This is the director of the There's probably uh, 10,000 people in each tower. 10,000 people in each tower would typically be in there on a normal business day. And we get about another 5,000 visitors during the course of the entire day. Mm -hmm. So by 8.30, 9 o'clock, the building should have been Okay, so in other words, at eight, at, by 8.30 to 9, you figure the building would have been approaching full capacity with the workers. So we are talking about roughly 10,000 people per tower. Per tower. 92 floors down the west tower of the building down the west tower of the building. She was able to walk without any chaos to give a radio report live. It's my understanding that literally thousands of people in the time before the two towers collapsed were able to make their way away from that area. Mass transit was certainly down at the time, but it's a, it's a quick walk to get out of that area. They had, what, a good 45 minutes, Ann Woolsey? to begin to make their way to the north. In Midtown right now, I was looking over this building and down into, in fact, I'm doing so right now. I'm looking down onto 47th Street, down onto 47th Street, right below us. This to my right here, no, you, you don't have to, you, you can't see it from there, I don't believe. Maybe you can see Times Square over here. You can't, this is Times Square right below me. This is a scene right now at 11.15 in the morning, at 11.15 when this would be a sea of tourists on a spectacular day in Manhattan, and instead sirens, sirens echo across Manhattan, and that is the TKTS stand. I believe you're looking at that now. You, you're not able to see that, are you? The TKTS stand, can you see it on the lens? We can't. Pan back down to where the yeah, world's Yeah, numb is. shock uh, all over this city and all across America. If you're watching us now, uh, you're looking at uh, the, the lower end of Manhattan where the World Trade Center once stood. It is gone this morning, obliterated after two strikes in coordinated attacks from airliners, one of them apparently hijacked from American Airlines. We are going to be getting a news conference from American Airlines in about 15 minutes. Uh, in the meantime, an Arabic uh, newspaper, a fairly authoritative source, uh, the editor of that London-based newspaper, says bin Laden, Osama bin Laden, the Saudi-born, now exiled to Afghanistan uh, 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 rebel leader, Osama bin Laden, according to this newspaper editor, warned three weeks ago that he would attack American interests, and he promised a very big one. Now. We cannot yet attribute this to Osama bin Laden. However, uh, that was the promise from this fairly authoritative London newspaper. Well, John, certainly uh, 
sources that I have talked to this morning, terrorist experts say this has the signature of Osama bin Laden, that he has the money, the uh, network, the ability to carry out this type of coordinated attack. And let me point out that uh, in the East African bombing terrorist trial here in New York City of the East African, of the bombing of the two embassies in, in East Africa, that three of the uh, alleged co-conspirators, uh, one is now in jail, two are in jail, uh, two uh, co one's in jail, two cooperated uh, for the United States government at the trial. They had pilot's licenses, uh, and they can fly airplanes. So I'm sure investigators right now are trying to uh, figure out a possible scenario. Were these planes hijacked by bin Laden people? Were the, did they rush up to the cockpit? You don't need a gun. You can use burst in several of them and strangle the uh, pilots or something uh, and then take over the controls of an airplane uh, near the uh, the last minute uh, while you're flying and divert the plane and smash it right into the uh, into the World Trade Center towers or in the Pentagon. Clearly that is a scenario that I would think that investigators are trying to go on right now to try and figure out exactly what happened, who is responsible uh, for this horrible act and I also think that we have now entered a new era clearly uh, a day of infamy. Uh, that we are not in this country clearly immune. September 11th, 2001, you're going to remember this day for a long time and a lot of things in this country will change as a result of what you're seeing on your screen now. Not all of the chaos, perhaps the worst of it in terms of loss of life, but not all of the chaos is taking place in Manhattan. Washington DC also has been under attack. A uh, US airplane apparently hijacked as well slamming into the outside wall of the outer ring of the Pentagon. Our David Schuster is there and has an update for us. David? John, we have the eyewitnesses describing it as a U.S. airplane at approximately 9.40 this morning, approaching National Airport from a strange approach. Uh, the eyewitnesses claiming that it then slammed into the south side of the Pentagon. We've just spoken with a U.S. Air spokesperson, Rick Weintraub, who says that all of their aircraft, commercial aircraft, have been accounted for and uh, says that they are uh, unaware of any one of their planes involved in this incident. So this may be a case of, of an eyewitness uh, misreading the markings on the plane, but we can confirm for you that there is a a large gaping 50-foot hole on the uh, E-ring of the south side of the Pentagon near the helipad. Uh, we're getting reports from the Arlington, um, formerly Arlington Hospital, which is now an Ananova Hospital, that uh, that injured are being taken there. The Pentagon has been evacuated. The, the smoke is still pretty thick here in the Pentagon, even on our side, the north side of the Pentagon. And uh, uh, 10 for Mobile Command Center, be advised, uh, we received a report of a bomb in the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. The tunnel is being closed at this time, Kate. Involved in this uh, particular incident at the Pentagon, U.S. Air says that it was not one of their aircraft, uh, that perhaps the red markings that an that eyewitness saw may, might belong to uh, American or Southwest, which, uh, or American or, or one of the commuter airlines that's flying a national uh, airport, which is just a few miles away. But again, uh, we are confirming that uh, an intelligence, uh, counterintelligence source is confirming that it was a commercial aircraft that slammed into the Pentagon this morning. Uh, there's no indication yet on the number of injuries of those killed, some initial reports reports are that some Arlington hospitals are being flooded with injuries. Uh, there were um, uh, dozens of fire trucks and ambulances that were streaking towards the Pentagon uh, at approximately uh, 945 this morning. Yes, yeah, so, so now we know the identity of two of the flights involved in today's incidents. Uh, that, that, that leaves at, uh, at least one more, and if the report of the crash in Pittsburgh is accurate, that leaves two more uh, that we don't have identified yet, but it gives us uh, okay. those two that you mentioned. Well, it could have been both both these, uh, Walk to the both these planes the could have been into the uh, okay. into the Twin Trade Towers because it was plainly there were two uh, airliners that went into the Twin Trade Towers to up here as we saw on the videotape of the crash. Okay, they say there's a bomb in the school here. I was told by by firefighters. Pat Dawson, let's go okay. to you in Lower Manhattan. You uh, have a report of another bomb. All right, Tom. We have just Tom. We've just been told we're being evacuated. You can see all the emergency workers walking north on the West Side Highway in New York. We've been told by firefighters here that there is a report of a bomb in this building. This is a school, a high school right here. And as you can see, they're moving everybody away from this building. They've said that there's a bomb in the building. They are evacuating us north now. That is a according to firefighters on the scene, and we're going to move out of here right now just to keep ourselves safe. So we're going to start walking north ourselves. But that's what we're being told by New York City firefighters here, that there were reports of a bomb in that high school right there. It's called Stuyvesant High School. And so we are walking north to get out of the way. You can see just to my left here, these are the, even the ambulances which were down there are being moved north. The firefighters are being moved north. Everybody is being moved north. We're being asked by the police now to go north and get out of the way. 
way. Uh, is it, officer, do you have any idea of what the problem is? There's a is? report of a secondary device possibly in the area of this school, so they're going to move everybody back as a precaution. Secondary device meaning a bomb? Possibly. Okay. And where did that report come from? Was it, it called came, in? It came, came in over, uh, over our radios, and it's reported through our supervisors on down, so we're pulling everybody back. And that's in the Stuyvesant High School right there? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Officer McQuaid. Pat, that that's Officer McQuaid of New York City Emergency Service. Pat, that school has I'm been sorry, evacuated. Yeah, well, I don't think there was anyone in the school, Katie, this morning. Uh, I, at this point, I think everybody had been evacuated from here probably uh, when the first events took place early this morning, just because of the fact that it's so close to uh, the World Trade Center. Uh, most of these buildings around here have been evacuated, so I would imagine, I, don't, I never saw any kids going into that school this morning, so I'm going to presume that they never even allowed them to get to school this morning, and that anywhere that were here at 845 were probably moved out almost within moments after this, uh, uh, the crash took place because it literally is only about 10 blocks north of here and I haven't seen any students coming in or out. Things that uh, they've been very concerned about in recent years is the notions, notion that could hospitals deal with massive amounts of, amounts of casualties like this and now they're going to... Let me just interrupt you for a second so we hear it as it's happening. Just come out, we're walking. Uh... It's just come down. The second, everyone is being asked to get down. Come down. The people are now panicking again. This... Give them air. Give them air. You can walk. You can film. seen it's been repeated hundreds and hundreds of maybe as far as we know thousands of times uh, the reports in John uh, John Miller was talking about the number of hospitals and the military making its its uh, medical staff available to to the citizen to the to the layman hierarchy here um, we've had reports from various hospitals saying that hundreds of people are burned from from head to toe uh, one doctor at st. Vincent's Hospital in lower Manhattan just simply said the place was crowding up very quickly by people who had been burned um, and, and the horrifying magnitude of all this is to be reminded, I, I think we're trying to, I'm going to try to get this right, Nancy, but I think maybe as many as 50,000 people work in the immediate area of the trade center, of the World Trade Center, in which there are these two twin towers. Am I right on that, that as many as 50,000 people work in? I don't know the figure, but the World Trade Center complex, not just the two towers, which are you know, over 100 stories each, but they're flanked by the World Financial Center. Um, so there are clearly tens of thousands of people within a two-block radius. And, and John, John McQuethy, who called in just a short while from the, from the Pentagon, uh, talking about the aircraft that had penetrated the outer ring of the Pentagon to the inner ring, we're talking about the Pentagon now, um, had had many floors of destruction and, um, and heavy casualties. It's just impossible at the moment to grasp other than to try to aggregate the, circum the normal circumstances of how many people live uh, and work uh, in the immediate area. And thousands and thousands of people work uh, in the Pentagon every day. Um, which has now been overrun by, by local police um, and by state authorities and by the military itself trying to take care of its own. They understand the magnitude of this. They understand that the American people now are going to be waiting and watching for a response from Washington other than what the president gave in Florida. Uh, as you might expect, uh, even our most sophisticated communications uh, 2001 uh, era, it is still extremely difficult trying to get any kinds of information. The cell phones are down, many of the, the hard lines are down, uh, but I've been assured by people at the White House and at the Pentagon that in fact 
uh, they are in touch with each other and have uh, the situation is under control the best they can. But like all of us, they simply don't know yet who did this. Tim, you talked about Porter Goss. Obviously, the Capitol was evacuated along with other major monuments and major government buildings in, the, in Washington, D.C. Where are people, members of Congress right now? Have they assembled anywhere? And, and, and what are they doing? And where are they? Katie, after the explosion at the World Trade Center, Congress convened, uh, said a prayer, and then uh, recessed. Uh, and mo many of the members headed home. Uh, and they were obviously going to look forward to a very difficult week in Washington dealing with, with the economy. I'm told Porter Goss is on the telephone now with me. Congressman, can you hear me? Congressman Goss, can you hear me? And we'll continue to continue to effort that, Katie. Uh, but most of the congressmen have now and congresswomen have returned to their homes here in Washington uh, because the, the building itself has been evacuated. The leadership of the Congress, as I mentioned, Speaker Hassett particularly, is in a secure uh, place. And he will be in constant communication with the president and vice president, uh, being the number thir third person in the hierarchy. All right, Tim Russert in Washington. Tim, thanks very much. And when you get Porter Goss on the phone, maybe you can give us some more information. Thanks, Tim. We'll be right back to you. All right, let's go now to MSNBC's Ashley Banfield, who's in Lower Manhattan, standing by with some people who were either inside those buildings or near the buildings when those planes hit. Ashley? Yeah, hi. Uh, I am just about uh, between five and ten blocks north of the actual site of where those two towers have come down. We're obviously having a bit of trouble right now maintaining our location because we just heard one more explosion. That's about the fourth one we've heard. The police are telling us they're either car bombs or they are uh, simply cars that have overheated so much that they're exploding. But every time one of those happens, there's a flurry of activity and there are more emergency vehicles that come down this road. I don't know if you can shoot past me and shoot down into that black cloud in there. That is the cloud that we were in just uh, about 45 minutes ago or so. At the time we were there, when the, when the first trade tower came down, my producer and I were uh, overcome by the cloud of debris and smoke that came at us so rapidly. We had to break down a window to, a, to an apartment building. We had to break the window and, and, and go into the second door inside just to breathe. We were followed by a police officer and a security guard from the World Trade Center area. I want to show you something, if I can. I'm just using a cell phone so that I can hear you because there are no cell lines that are coming out of um, Manhattan at the time, but see if you can zero in on this right here. This is the kind of debris that we're seeing all over the ground. If you can see the address, One World Trade Center, Trade Center, Trade Center, Trade Center, Trade Center. Okay, obviously we're having some technical problems with Ashley Banfield, who is on the ground near the World Trade Center about five blocks away. All right, here's the first confirmation from United Airlines. It's confirmed one of its flights crashed in the Pittsburgh area. Flight 93, a Boeing 757, a flight involved originating in Newark. It was bound for San Francisco. No information on how many people were on board. A 757 carries a lot of folks. Uh, anyone who's flown from Newark to San Francisco knows that most of those flights carry uh, a full load. Okay, so this now brings to three the number of confirmed flights that have been involved in this tragic day. American Airlines Flight 11 from Boston to Los Angeles, flight 77 from Washington Dulles Airport to Los Angeles with 58 passengers on board and now the United flight, Tom, that you just mentioned. And, and you can say that we have to say that the, the number of passengers was relatively low on those first flights, and, and we can only hope this was not a full flight, this United flight. You know, there was a collapse, obviously, not just of intelligence, but of airport security as well, that that many planes were hijacked almost simultaneously. Although uh, these days, as we know, Tom, and, and learned from the TWA tragedy, flight 800, that oftentimes some of these devices are absolutely, uh, it's impossible to see them in, in our kind of uh, security x-ray machines that you have at typical airports. Some are made of plastics. They can be very small and virtually undetectable, which is, of course, another major problem for airport security. We're going to go to Bob Bazell, who is at St. Vincent's Hospital. Obviously, we're uh, very concerned about the people who were in the World Trade Center when these two planes crashed into them. Bob, tell me about the scene at St. Vincent's Hospital. Uh, Katie, the wounded are starting to come in with great regularity now. Almost every 30 seconds an ambulance pulls up. Some of them are very badly burned. Some are dead. I've seen uh, several dead bodies go in. 
Cardinal Egan, the head of the Catholic Archdiocese, is standing out on the street uh, giving last rites. He said, may God help us many times over. There's been a call out for blood uh, from all the New York hospitals. People are lined up around the block. People have responded in enormous numbers uh, to that. Everybody seems to want to help in some way. New York has become kind of surrealistic on the streets above lower Manhattan because all the subways and commuter lines and bridges and tunnels have been shut down. So many people are just, who are, are not injured are wandering around aimlessly. But in the hospitals, there's so many injured coming in now that they don't have run out of gurneys. And they brought every office chair that they have down and put sheets over that to carry people in. It's an enormous amount of work for all the staff. Uh, people have come in. Uh, everybody who was off has been come in. Calls have gone out for specialists, for plastic surgeons, for burn specialists. And it's going to be a very grueling uh, several days ahead. Well, uh, Bob, the other thing is that I don't know whether you can tell about traffic in the rest of Manhattan because a lot of our major hospitals are well north of there, Lenox Hill, Columbia Presbyterian, New York Cornell. Are the ambulances able to get through if they cleared the traffic? We're in kind of a tomb here in the studios in Midtown. Tom, I, have, I had trouble hearing you just that time. Uh, the there's a system in place here where there's triaging people down in lower Manhattan. They're putting uh, sometimes tags around their neck to show some people you see wandering up from lower Manhattan who have only slight injuries who have been cleared. Others are very seriously injured. Every hospital in the area is involved in, the, in a plan to take in some kind of patients. This one where I'm at, uh, St. Vincent's, is one of the closest with a uh, major trauma center. But every hospital is on alert. Every hospital is just taking in what is becoming now a sea of patients. All right, NBC's Robert Bazell. Bob, thanks very much. Let's go back to Washington and NBC's Tim Russert, who has a guest on the phone, Porter Goss, the head of the House Intelligence Committee. Tim? Exactly right. Uh, Congressman Goss, are you there? I'm here, Tim. As the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, what is your official reaction to what we witnessed this morning? Well, obviously, I'm horrified. Uh, we, uh, we do our best to make sure there are no surprises like this happening to Americans at home or abroad. Uh, it's never 100 percent sure, and we got the wake-up call again today. Uh, it is uh, unbelievable that anybody would do an act like this, basically using uh, innocent victims aboard our commercial airliners as weapons uh, against other innocent victims in our uh, big buildings, our symbols of uh, economy and commerce in New York, and uh, our defense and legislative and executive buildings here in Washington. When people are watching this at home, Congressman, they're saying to themselves, how could this happen in the United States of America? A complete breakdown in our airport security, a complete breakdown in our airspace security over the Pentagon, uh, the center of our military command. How could something be this vulnerable? Well, we are a free, open, democratic society, and we take great pride in that. Uh, we pay a price for it. Uh, we, as you know, if you've ever flown into Washington National, Washington Reagan Airport, you fly right over the Pentagon. And many times we've commented on uh, how vulnerable the building is for just that reason. Uh, that vulnerability was taken advantage of today. Uh, as for uh, commercial airliners flying around New York in airspace there, uh, obviously they fly near the trade towers. To be able to say that our airport security works 100%, uh, anybody who flies in America knows that's not true. You answer a few questions before you get on the plane and show a photo ID. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you can't do mayhem on the plane, as we see from time to time. And tragically, uh, some kind of an organization somewhere has orchestrated all this in an effective fashion. We have great intelligence capabilities out there who keep us constantly on alert about these types of reports. Uh, I can tell you I know of no specific reporting uh, anything of this particular specificity on this day uh, with these targets, but I can tell you that we are scrambling all the time to assess uh, information that would do harm to the United States and its people. Uh, and as we know, we, we've seen uh, our, our military installation subject to attack, our embassy subject to attack uh, before. Uh, we stop a lot, but, but obviously uh, we don't get it all, and uh, we're just going to have to rethink how we do business in today's world and deal with these kinds of threats. Based on your experience as a honored CIA agent and now as a very res highly respected chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, how many organizations, terrorist organizations in the world, are capable of pulling off such a coordinated massive attack? Uh, I would say there's only a handful if we're not talking about state-sponsored terrorism. Uh, if you're talking state-sponsored, it, it could be more, but I don't think we're dealing with state-sponsored. I think we're dealing here with a loose network, a loose, asso loose association of people who have the same goal, which is an anti-United States goal, who have found a way to get together and, and network and, uh, and pull this thing off. Uh, 
part of the problem uh, with terrorism is that one of the weapons of terrorism is confusion. And one of the hopes now, of course, of the terrorists who perpetrated this is that we will uh, have lots of confusion uh, in the United States and there will be rumors of other things happening and that will upset uh, how we go about our business and our behavior and how our law enforcement people react and so forth. That's one thing to deal with. And another thing to deal with, as the president alluded to this morning in his very strong statement, was that we will respond. The question is, against whom? And we want to make absolutely sure when we're dealing with asymmetrical warfare such as this, where we're dealing with innocent people, by and large, who are victims of this, that we respond appropriately and uh, not uh, provoke any other incidents uh, that are unwarranted in the world, but get the people who actually cause this to happen. And that requires good information, and obviously we're in the process of trying to get that information. But it may take some time to yes, sort through, through all this, find the fingerprints, and in fact launch any kind of retaliation. That's, that is certainly true, and one of the hallmarks we may need is patience these days. Congressman Porter Goss, Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, we thank you very much. We'll be contacting you throughout the day, and we very much appreciate you joining us this morning. Well, thank you. I add my prayers to the others. Thank you much. Back to you, Matt. Okay. Claire Shipman uh, will get to as much. She's got a very good vantage point over the White House. It does not by any means look like the traditional arrival of the President from Andrews Air Force Base in a, in a Marine helicopter on the south lawn of the White House. And quite frankly, everybody on the roof, uh, the few remaining people on the roof of the of the building now. Uh, this is a this is a permanent, a permanent guard. I think we're all in the country familiar with the fact that this is a permanent military installation on the top of the White House, uh, as there is one of the really intense uh, perimeters uh, around that. Uh, but I think they would not have been quite so relaxed uh, if uh, if the president was returning to the White House. And you heard John Cochran report from Florida a while ago that there is no. Uh, nobody's told him where the president is going to land on his way back. In fact, he does traditionally land at Andrews Air Force Base, and we have no idea um, precisely where he is going to land. And um, But there is no doubt at the moment that authorities are on alert from coast to coast still. All air traffic halted, all high-profile buildings in New York City, um, certainly in the District of Columbia, all of the national buildings have been evacuated. It's certainly been true in Chicago. The Sears Tower of Chicago was evacuated. So were the tallest skyscrapers in Boston, Cleveland, and Minneapolis, and the, and the Space Needle as well in Seattle was closed. Um, military bases all across the country went on uh, alert. Uh, on a variety of stages alert in, in, in Washington, uh, military personnel uh, were put on what's called uh, alert level delta, which is the highest possible alert status, and military personnel throughout the country were put on Charlie, um, on Charlie threat level. Uh, for people who follow those things, we say them often without knowing what they mean, but they're both pretty high states of alert. Um, the, there was extra security put in place um, at the Department of Energy's uh, nuclear weapons and research complex in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Uh, they put in extra security at the Los Alamos National Lab in New Mexico and among the other places at Fort Detrick in, in, in Frederick, Maryland. Um, this is to give you some sense of the magnitude. We're looking at a limited amount of picture of New York City and Washington. But just let me just go on with this list of what people did across the country today. In Louisiana, the state police urged all uh, petrochemical and pipeline companies to be on alert. Uh, a, 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 in this particular tension, uh, a, a target which uh, people who study uh, uh, terrorism believed, which was vulnerable. In Los Angeles, all of the police in Los Angeles went on tactical alert and, and mobilized their anti-terrorist division. You recall before the World Trade uh, Fair, uh, the World Trade Meeting that was held up in Seattle, uh, one of the last times the, the system really worked and everybody efficiently was when they caught a guy coming across the border from British Columbia and Canada uh, with a view to, uh, to blowing up uh, the uh, the Space Needle, I think it was at the time, in uh, the, the Space Needle in, in, in Seattle. That's what they originally suspected and then later updated it. Turned it into it, something in Los Angeles. When he began to cooperate, he admitted his plan was to set off a massive bomb inside the terminal of LAX, Los Angeles Airport. That's right. And what I remember at the time about that, John, which is why everybody in the country is so on edge today, you should know here was a guy who was picked up by one agent at one border crossing in the country because he was sweating. 
one, one because old, he one alert old. agent who who didn't like the fact that he was panicking. Yeah, okay. Under questioning. Let me go back now to the World Trade Center. Just to finish this very quickly, under orders from the FAA, airports nationwide are now closed all across the country. Anybody's just connecting with the world today and you're planning to go anywhere on an aircraft from one place to another, you can just forget it. So let's go back to the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan on the west side and talk to Don Baylor. Don. Over for New York. Yet, as you know, this is one of the most densely constructed pieces of real estate in the world. And when the Twin Towers collapsed, it appears that they ignited fires on surrounding buildings. I'm seeing a huge amount of smoke. Just about 15 minutes ago, there was a phalanx of firemen, I would say probably about 50 firemen, moving deliberately into this black cloud of smoke. They disappeared completely into it. Then about five minutes ago, there was quite a bit of activity as a number of police officers started moving back uh, individuals as well as firemen who were who were with their their fire trucks away so they moved the line of demarcation back away from that area and I can see at least two buildings look to be partially involved just from my vantage point I'm about four blocks away from where the Twin Towers once stood um, right before the second tower collapsed there, when, uh, when you and John were talking about the concerns over that possibility, uh, Mayor Rudolph Giuliani walked right past me here on Church Street and, and uh, Duane Street, again, about four blocks from that area, moving his entourage out of that, that region. And then just moments later was when the collapse happened. There was a complete cessation of ambulances and any kind of emergency traffic in this area for about five minutes. And then slowly I saw one or two ambulances trickle out of the, this incredible cloud of dust with their with debris on top of them. Some of them had broken windshields. There was a police car that came by that looked like the top had been almost completely stove in. Uh, and that's one of the most disconcerting aspects this morning has been on this avenue that has been opened up, Church Street, there's just been a trickling of, of emergency vehicles coming out of that scene and towards the hospitals. Um, I'm not sure how much it, they've been trapped down in that area or whether they moved away and are going to some of the other area hospitals that don't, don't come by here. But uh, I've not seen anywhere near the number of ambulances leaving the site that one would expect. Uh, Don, let me ask you this. Do, do you have... And I realize this is a tough one to ask you to speculate about. After the attack occurred on the aircraft, um, uh, the first air aircraft attack on one tower and then the second one, how many people managed to get out of that place before they collapsed? Have you any idea? Would you see a large number? I saw number? A, a river of, of people at first running when, when the first attack happened. Um, there were screams. A lot of people were looking up in shock. And then about... I would say a minute, minute and a half later, there was a steady stream of people moving from closer to that area, running up the streets. Uh, then, of course, as, as I guess is, is human nature, a lot of people stopped feeling that they were maybe far enough away that it was safe, started looking up, talking, pointing, and then the second plane hit. And that, again, caused another stream of, of panic. As, as the police started to respond and started to try to clear the streets, there was a very calm, organized evacuation of the southern part of Manhattan. I saw no panic whatsoever. It was very calm. The police were directing traffic, getting all the cars out of this area, getting all the people north. But when the first tower, the, the one that actually was that, that you saw, was the second tower hit, but the first tower to collapse, fell, then it was mass chaos. And there were thousands of people running up the street. This billowing cloud of dust and debris came washing up over here four, four blocks away, uh, which only exacerbated the, the chaos of the moment. And then from then on, from the, the time that the first tower collapsed, there was just the street here, Church Street, was just full of people covered in dust holding their handkerchiefs or their or papers over their mouths to, to try to breathe, moving northward away from this area. That stream trickled out, and then when the second building collapsed, once again there were more people, but this time when the second building collapsed, I witnessed firemen who were helping one another, struggling up the street, covered in debris. I, there was a police officer who was being carried by two other police officers um, trying to get out of that area. So there was obviously a lot of, of uh, collateral damage with the people around that area. Uh, I would say even not, not just at the base of it, but uh, for them to have gotten to my point that quickly, they would have been injured 
probably two, two and a half blocks away from where the, the towers fell. Don, thanks very much. And don't go away because you've, all, you've helped us appreciate at ground level uh, what, what, as I said to, before, seems almost surrealistic when you look at it on television. In terms of people getting out of the trade towers, do you have any sense at all? Have you heard anything, even anecdotally, from the cops about how many people managed to get out of the building before they collapsed? No, absolutely not. But but you can imagine that uh, the the World Trade Centers, I'm not sure how many elevators exactly they have, but I, I have been in those buildings, and I think there are around 20 elevators in each. Mm. If they shut down immediately, you can imagine the people who would be streaming down the, the fire escapes and the, the stairwells. There's also, I don't know if it was the case now, but I do know that one of the of the towers had a major elevator that went all the way to the top that was malfunctioning and has been malfunctioning for uh, at least a month. They've been having a lot of trouble with that. Not that that would have made any kind of difference, of course, once those elevators shut down, as soon as the, I, I imagine the fire alarms go on, that kind of thing, it's, it's de rigueur that, that uh, the elevators are not to be used in that situation. If the elevators go all the way to the top, and that's where the, the extent of the damage was at the very top of these, you would there's probably no way that anyone on the lower floor was able to use elevators, so they were all going down the stairwell, and one can only hope that, that there was quick enough reaction that they did get clear away, that they did not Thank stop you, at the base. Thank you, Don, very much. You know, somebody said, uh, looking at the Pentagon this morning, that it reminded them of World War II. Clearly a person too young to remember World War II. But as you look at these scenes, you can feel absolutely clear that you're looking at the results of the United States at war with angry and vicious people. Um, who will do in the future, as they have in the past, whatever they can to get at the United States, this huge presence in the world, with any number of enemies in the world, with any number of people who feel the United States has messed up their lives or their countries or their movements or impeded them from something. And so, in fairness, without being too carried away, we are looking at pictures from a war zone this morning, not a picture of something that looks like a war zone. And we have had a steady stream of patients coming through the door since the first explosion occurred some hours ago. Uh, we have uh, information at this point on uh, three plus fatalities, uh, plus because there may be additional fatalities that I'm not, I have not yet been informed of. Um, we have had uh, a severe burn case one individual is an amputee, a uh, serious neurosurgical injury, a whole range of uh, injuries from both debris, smoke inhalation, respiratory uh, issues related to smoke and debris from the collapse of the two buildings. So how many, how many uh, medical personnel, Kathleen, do you have working there at NYU Hospital? Uh, our, we have a medical staff of 500 uh, plus physicians. Uh, the entire medical staff has been mobilized, as has the nursing staff, and they are working as hard as it's possible to work. And tell me again, Kathleen, I know it's hard to estimate how many people you've seen so far. Uh, it's in the hundreds. Uh, our entire cafeteria has been transformed to a, a triage area, and it is multiple -wall people at the present time. All right, Kathleen, thank you very much for that update. I'm sure we'll be checking back with you a bit later on, and thank you very much. Communications uh, infrastructure, satellite dishes, uh, television towers, and so forth were located on top of the World Trade Center and the World Trade Center, both towers are essentially gone now, a, a smoking pile of rubble. As you can see, that smoke column still billowing out of lower Manhattan. Rick Leventhal was uh, in downtown Manhattan when the buildings came down and has an updated uh, update for us uh, from lower Manhattan. Rick? Well, John, uh, we're, we're on Church Street at Reed Street, for those of you familiar with Lower Manhattan, just a few blocks away from World Trade. Still thick black smoke billowing from the scene where both towers collapsed, again, just a few blocks away from us. We were standing out here on Church Street when both towers came tumbling down, and each time there was a huge cloud of smoke and debris that came roaring down this street, and everyone literally ran for their lives. At this point, the police have uh, been efforting to establish a perimeter. They're trying to keep people back 
and make sure that no one gets uh, interferes with their job, which is to try and uh, secure the area and then get inside that World Trade Center rubble to see whether or not they can locate any survivors who may have been inside the building or just outside the building when it came tumbling down. Uh, we want to bring in Mark Walsh, who's a, a freelancer for Fox. You live just a few blocks away and witnessed. Dude, I was I was I live on the 43rd floor of a building, which is five blocks from the World Trade Center itself. I witnessed the entire thing from beginning to end. People talk about how it looked like a movie. I know when I came walking down here early this morning and saw both towers on fire and people on every street corner, it was it was it was like a movie. But you watched the planes hit the towers. I was watching with my roommate. It was approximately several minutes after the first plane had hit. I saw this plane come out of nowhere and just ream right into the side of the Twin Tower, exploding through the other side. And then I witnessed both towers collapse, one first and then the second, mostly due to structural failure because the fire was just too intense. Uh, obviously, there were there were a lot of people inside the buildings at the time. Two guys um, from the 7th Precinct, uh, the 1st Precinct, the fire department right here, the 7th truck, they, those guys are all right there at, at ground zero when those things went down. And God bless. I know there's a lot of guys there that were around there, and hopefully they made it out. What was happening around you and the streets around you as this was all going down? Absolute pandemonium. From my viewpoint, up 43 floors, I could see people running like ants, just absolutely scurrying for their lives, billows of smoke coming through the streets, just walking down the street, just pushing everybody back. And then several minutes after, it looked like it had just snowed over the entire area. Yeah, the, the, the debris, the soot was thick on the street. You, there's still a, a, a dusting of it out here, uh, but, but when I... When I was standing here and the towers collapsed, we we saw police officers running for their lives, screaming, get back, get back, get back. And I'll tell you, that's a wake-up call when you see cops running for their lives and people, too, women's pushing baby carriages, that sort of thing. Well, you had the first tower first. That one, When that first went down, it just pushed everybody back. And it was a good 15 minutes before the second tower finally right. collapsed. Yeah. And it was just overwhelming. And by that point, it was just insane. Well. well. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of similar stories from people who were inside the building. One gentleman we spoke to earlier today, John, uh, was on the 77th floor and said it was a relatively orderly evacuation at that point after the first plane hit the first tower. Everyone going down the stairs, not a lot of panic. But when they got to the sixth floor, he says they felt a second shake. And that, then people started to really be concerned. Uh, obviously, there were uh, people uh, in the building at the time of this, and, and uh, some of those people, uh, they haven't recovered them yet. And, and that's a, a big issue right now, is trying to get the, the rescue workers and, and the emergency crews to the building. There were police officers there and emergency crews there uh, when this was all happening. and. And they were right at ground zero when it all went down. Can, so can we talk to you? What's your role out here right now? Uh, just standing by right now. Can't say what role I'm playing right now. Well, there's a lot of standing by. There's also concern that some of these other buildings might actually come down. This building right here with the glass uh, that you see, this, the nearest tall building, uh, that has structural damage as well. Uh, we saw a lot of glass broken out, and a corner of the building appeared to be uh, in distress. And there's concern that there might actually be another collapse uh, of that building. And I can also tell you that when we, were, when we first got here, we were a few blocks up. We could actually see debris from one of the planes on the street, a huge gear at one point, uh, looked like a piece of an engine at another point. So that debris is still littering that area up there. They had roped it off with police tape, and they had FBI agents out there, and that was just before the first tower came tumbling down, and everyone went running away. So there's evidence out here. There's a lot of work left to be done, and uh, as you can imagine, the streets are, are a bit chaotic at this point. But I just want to show you one one drastic uh, 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 difference looking north as opposed to looking south. Blue skies, uh, clear streets, not a, not a lot going on over there, but then come back around this way, Dan, and uh, you'll see just... Uh, Smoke billowing from the scene, uh, still obviously a, a major disaster waiting to be cleaned up. Back to you, John. All right, Rick Leventhal in Lower Manhattan. Thank you very much. Earlier today, an official said they were also concerned about United Flight 175, Boston to Los Angeles. And now we have reports that concern was justified. A second plane has gone down, United Flight 70, 175. Again, that was from Boston to L.A. Uh, and as you look at the Pentagon, which was also hit by a plane earlier in the day. Jeff? Yes, it, Tom, you were mentioning that, that uh, it, this is such a rare act, and yet we now know of at least four commercial airliners that apparently were hijacked and either crashed or crashed into buildings, causing 
death and havoc of an unimaginable scale. So whatever, whoever is behind this, this is of a dimension that literally uh, dwarfs even fantasy. Pretty big with my dreams, and you know, fortunately or unfortunately, didn't get quite this large. Uh, it, it's not, generally speaking, it's not credible to think that you're going to find, a, you know, a, a, more than one person who's willing to, to do something like this because people who are willing to throw their lives away are fairly rare. In this case, uh, they got you know somebody who was well organized and, and and produced a well planned and reasonably well executed operation. Well, it, and we need to find out who it was and then to go after him. But that's you know that's going to take time. But we do have the people to do that if they have the proper support from the executive branch of the government and from uh, and from the general population of our country to identify, locate, and deal with uh, the people who performed this act. The president uh, said earlier today, shortly after the Trade Center attacks, uh, the president characterizing these as terrorist attacks and said that the United States government will do whatever it is necessary to hunt down those people responsible. I think it is fair to say, uh, Tom, Jeff, all of uh, you on the line here, it is fair to say that what we know is that this is an extraordinarily large operation and what we don't know in a way is just how big it is. Uh, it seems that in each passing moment or so we get another report of another incident and, and our instinct tells us that they are all connected. Uh, we have a number of planes down, two American airline jets, two United jets down. We have a plane that hit the Pentagon. We had two that hit the Trade Center. Uh, you're talking about something that is, I, I think it's fair to say, Jeff, it is beyond anything any of us could have imagined. Could possibly have imagined. I think that with those of us who, who dealt with Oklahoma City, those of us who dealt with the Trade Center here in 93, as we both did, uh, you say, that is, that is awful what happened. And you look at what appears to be playing out today, and we have no idea, no idea yet, what the loss of life will be, certainly in the hundreds. We know that hospitals here in New York are overwhelmed with people being brought there all over the city of New York and beyond. The, the only piece of news that is the least bit, I guess, uh, reassuring is that, is that there is no report of any kind of chemical result. That is, the folks on the ground around the World Trade Center, the rescue crews, the survivors, there is absolutely no indication at this moment that there was any kind of, bio, of bioterrorism involved. Not that what happened here isn't horrific enough. A absolutely. And uh, let me just add on again, small, medium-sized pieces of information as we go. Uh, all airlines in the country are closed down. Uh, all airports in the country are closed down. We now are being told that the U.S.-Mexican border has been sealed. Uh, we don't know if that is just simply part of a plan that the government puts into effect.